This is Pocket Watching with JT. Jason Thornton is a certified financial planner, licensed in both tax and investments. Now, this is not personal financial advice. This is JT's real reaction to all your money and business questions. Need more? Book your personal consultation with my man JT at pocketwatcher.net. Now, let's go pocket watching. Pocket Watchers, welcome to Pocket Watching with JT. I am certified financial planner Jason Thornton. I am a financial advisor that specializes in tax and wealth planning for my clients. But on YouTube, I react to different finance related stories, scammer news, and your money questions. Tonight, tonight we have a good show. But before I even get started, with tonight's topic. I got to give a big shout out. We're over 88,000 and growing. We're slowly getting to our 100,000 subscriber goal. So do me a favor, hit the like button, share this content and subscribe if you have not already. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Before we even get into tonight's topic, I have to give a big shout out. Now, listen, I say this a lot because it's true. I did not start this channel as some kind of righteous crusade. I'm going to be honest. I started this channel because I'm an extremely petty financial advisor. Okay, and I'm going to get to the point of why I'm saying this, but I want to be clear. I'm not some saint. I'm not a perfect individual, but I am a man that spent several years in school, several years in college, studying accounting, marketing, financial planning, studying how to give financial advice. That's actual education in a college major that teaches you how to be a financial advisor. I went to school for that, okay? And One day, I just woke up and realized there are a bunch of clowns who just decided to jump online and start giving financial advice, bad financial advice. If it was good financial advice, maybe it wouldn't be a big deal with me. But not only are they uneducated, not only do they have absolutely no credentials to do this, they're giving bad financial advice. That is why I made this channel. It's because I'm just frustrated and outraged at the fact that there's people giving bad advice when there's people like me, we go to school for this, we get licensed, we become certified, and they are harming people who are mostly financially illiterate. Let's let's be real. A lot of the victims are financially illiterate and they are taking advantage of people. So I did this to be petty, but I want to show you guys this, something that I'm I'm, I'm very proud of here. Recently, if you were unaware, Eli from What Happened to Common Sense, Tony, The Closer Robinson, and myself, we were featured in an article by the Philadelphia Inquirer. Now, Many of the people who do not like the type of content that we make, they have called us several names. Clout chasers, haters, we're tearing black people, black men down. We we don't want to see other people shine and be successful. That's what they said. But based on this article and the work that we've been doing, clearly it's had some effect. So I got to thank Eli. Eli is really the person that really broke this story. Then Tony came up with a lot of people who were giving him a bunch of receipts and evidence of their being alleged victims of, you know, a big business, you know, and I came along and they blessed me with an opportunity to bring that story to my channel and share the story with you guys. And we got the attention of a major media outlet. And we did not waste the opportunity. We, If you read this article, you will understand that when I had an opportunity to speak with the journalists, I, just, I didn't keep it just on 
Mr. Parker. I explained to them that Parker, big business, is a small piece in this huge puzzle of financial grifters on social media. So if you have the time, I'm going to try to link the article in the show notes for people who watch the show later. Read this article, share this information, because we want to do everything we can to keep you and the people you care about from being victims of grifters. Now, once again, I'm no saint. I'm not perfect. I'm extremely petty. But if my pettiness happens to help you, then we all win. We all win. So shouts out to Eli and uh, Tony. If y'all are not subscribed to them or not following them on Instagram, stop what you're doing and subscribe and follow them now. All right. So for tonight's topic, here we go. For tonight's topic, let's let, let's get in on this. A few months ago, I did this video. This was the what happened to the pro-black financial super team, Black World Order. And you guys responded. You liked this video. And I even said in that video, I said, listen, this story is so big. This story has so many moving pieces. There's no way that I can tell the full story of what happened to BWO in one video. I said, there will be another part to this video. Well, it's been months. <laughs> and you guys have still yeah, I've been sending me DMs, messages here and there saying, when are we going to get an update on BWO? When are we going to get more information about what happened? Well, tonight, you get something way better than a simple part two. Tonight. We have a co-founder of the BWO with us. And he is going to tell his story from his point of view of how the BWO was started, how the BWO was managed, what went wrong with the BWO, and how it ended. All right? You can't get better than that. Can't get better than that. So here we go. Now, remember the house rules. Whenever we have a guest that comes to Pocket Watching with JT, we are good hosts. I don't want to see nothing crazy in the chat. Anyone who joins this platform and shares with us information and gives us the opportunity to ask them questions, let's play nice. All right, y'all can have fun. Y'all can do your jokes. Let's not be nasty. When they come here, they have my respect. All right? So I want you, the pocket watchers, please give the brother your respect. Because coming up here shows he 100% has character. All right? So we are, we're, we're, we're going to get into this. All right? We're going to get into this. And after he tells his story, we're going to have the panel. I got Eli here. I've got Tony here. And we're going to ask him some questions, but I'm going to allow him the opportunity to tell his story uninterrupted. Now, I know you say pocket watching with JT. You're not going to interrupt him. You're not going to cut him off. Listen, I'm working on this. I'm a financial advisor. I'm not a TV host, but I see your comments. A lot of you don't like it when I interrupt people. So I'm going to be sitting back, biting my lip, allowing him to tell the full narrative. And then the panel is going to come up. And we're going to ask some questions. And if you have a question that you want me to ask him, put in the super chat. And when it's time for question and answers, I will absolutely, I will ask your question. But some of you, some of you may not be aware of what the BWO was. You may be new to this. So I'm going to share this video real quick to be a, just a refresher of what the BWO was. Here we go. Talking about how they black gods, how we black kings, how we black queens. When I look at your lifestyle, there's no legacy, there's no kingdom about it. When you talk about the order, you talk about understanding trading. When you talk about the order, you talk about godlike mentality. When you talk about the order, you talk about omnipresence online. When you talk about the order, you talk about building your own banking system. What you got to understand is that you can't call yourself a god, a king, or a queen without having system and order in place. That's why you need the order. We want to help you be able to take your family's trajectory to the next level and build real wealth and take your family to the next level. 
Welcome to the order. There's no better time than the now. You come and you pay up front, we give you more. You pay for your car. Learning how to make money is learning how to properly utilize the 1% trading. Once we got developed students out of that, it's the digital real estate, showing them how to build their brand, build content. They're going to get that. Got anywhere between 95 and 115 that we still can allocate some expenses to. You know what I'm saying? People begin to grow and stretch, but most importantly, seeing people that look like us being able to operate businesses on a high level where other people think that we can't do it. And it's a mindset shift to where it comes where we can actually start producing the type of lifestyle that builds wealth. Tap in with the guys, BWO. All right, so here we go. No more waiting. I'm gonna bring up our brother. He is coming to this platform to inform you of what happened to BWO, our brother, Jake Jacobs is in the building. What? It looks like you're on mute. Hold on. There you go. What's going on, brother? What's going on, bro? Listen, I, I want people to know, me and this brother has had several phone conversations offline. I tell you this 100%. The brother has my respect. I believe he's a guy of good character. I want y'all to listen to what he has to say. And then, of course, we're going to have the round table. So yeah. as I told you before offline, the floor is yours. Please introduce yourself. Let us know, you know, how BWO got started, how it was run, how it ended from your point of view as a co-founder of the BWO. First and foremost, I want to appreciate you, JT, for allowing me to come onto your platform to talk about what happened with BWO and also to be able to clear um, my name and my company's name that was a part of BWO. Um, I don't take it lightly, so I do appreciate that. Yes, you and I have had several conversations offline. Several receipts have been shown, and I've had to wait two years letting people, you know, um, say whatever they wanted, uh, kind of drag my name and my company's name in the mud because you know we were working on um our legal stance mm -hmm. and um everyone that's here right now i thank you for taking time out to be able to hear my side of the story um and the only thing i have i don't have i don't have uh, uh no wiggle out i just have proof i have receipts i have photos i have texts i have emails i have memorandums so that you guys can kind of get a full picture of what was going on and also to be able to show you that just because someone's the loudest it doesn't mean that they're right and we have a lot of the stuff that we kind of have already in place because we were fighting and still are fighting uh some legal battles with the merchant account um and it's just time for somebody to come out and kind of give everyone i think everyone deserves to know what was going on with bwo and i'm gonna explain that um like jt asked me he said don't assume that anyone on this a YouTube actually knows who you are. So you got to give them, you got to give them a, a, you have to give them like a bio of who you are so that they know, like, you're not just somebody that just came up on the internet and became some overnight success on the internet. So I have a uh, documentation to show that I've been actually teaching for a decade, financial literacy, business development um, for a long time. And so I'm just going to go ahead and get right into it so that we can get to the panel because I'm ready for this to be behind. I'm tired of getting anxiety every time I hear BWO, Jabril, uh, Chris Cole name, and my name is associated with it. Um, and so I just want to let y'all know just because someone is quiet doesn't mean uh, that they're they're in the wrong. OK, so I'm just going to go here. I'm going to share my screen. All right. Second uh, it pops up, I'm going to load it. OK. OK, thank you. Um, I'm going to share my entire screen because I, I have to I have like photos. So just let me know if you can see. Uh, the photos. I'm, I can't really see you all. Uh, yep, it's popping up right now. We're looking okay. at photos. All right, thank you. So um, I'm going to actually make this big. So here, um, can you see it big? Do I need to make it larger or what? It looks, it looks clear enough for me. Okay, cool. So this is me in 2013 receiving a check uh, at Wiley College. Um, I was building a financial literacy organization on my campus. And we got funded by Capital One at Wiley College in 2013. I think this is important for people to understand that I'm just not somebody that saw a plan or a play to just kind of get over on people 
uh, just because I saw a money play when it comes to financial literacy. I've been working on programming and curriculums since 2013, and this is a documentation that anyone can go research online. It's the Marshall News Messenger in 2013 that kind of showed this. We actually started in 2012, so I'm literally 11 years in the game of teaching financial literacy. Okay, since 2015, I've been teaching it. I've been teaching people. I've been packing out rooms, teaching financial literacy and business. Right. 26. To be clear, you you've been teaching financial literacy before Instagram. Correct. That, yeah. that that's the main yeah. point that I'm getting. Yeah. Before yeah. Instagram, before Click Funnels, yeah. you've been teaching financial literacy. Yes, sir. Here's my question. Okay. So I I see it right. I yes, I believe it. I see it. Real business person, you had and still do have an active agency yes, where sir. you're, you know, an insurance producer and whatnot. When did you meet Brother Ben X? When did, oh. did, did, did the online part come in? I got you. So um, actually, this guy right here, Amir, mm -hmm. he's the uh, Amir is the one who um, actually I went to go speak at a conference. Right. I've always spoke at conferences for free. I've never charged because I feel like information to the people. If you have the information, give it. And then after that, services provided. So I was actually speaking on a panel. I was speaking right next to Brother Ben. And Brother Ben, um, if anybody knows, he literally has a heart for the people. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so we're sitting there. And on the panel, uh, JT, uh, there's a crowd. And there's a guy, you know, a white guy that was in the crowd. And he was like, this, the solution to black, um, uh, to black businesses is y'all need funding. So anyone reach out to me, I'll get you funding. I stood up and I said, it's not the, it's not the funding that's the issue. That the funding is not the issue. What's the problem is the lack of information and then quality information where people actually know what it takes to actually build a business. And most people want shortcuts. And so when I said that, me and Ben kind of connected. Amir, Amir right here is the one who told me I need to connect with Ben because he has a big following online. I don't really trust and I never really trusted anyone online because most people I already knew back then people was buying followers. I knew back then people were buying views. You can go to my social. It was like my social something where you can buy views and buy and, and by followers. So I never was really, uh, I never thought that social media was a real place or a medium to run a business. So I never needed it. And, um, and so when um, I went to go meet Ben, Ben was most people don't know, Ben actually became a client before we became business partners. Cause I've always been a person that said, I don't do business with nobody that doesn't truly believe in a product to understand why it works. And I'll get to the reason why we started um, uh, a charging for the private banking blueprint. I actually even have proof JT, where I sell my book, but the courses have always been free. So me and Ben did amazing. You know, when I met Ben, um, you know, he was great at content, but it was terrible at financial execution. He became a millionaire in six months working with me and we worked collectively together. We began to start building this ABS company. And because of the value that he brought, I awarded him equity inside of ABS so he can become a partner. So mm -hmm. just to clear things up, Ben did not start ABS. We He started as a client. And he was so valuable as a value add, as an affiliate, that I awarded him uh, um, uh, equity so that he can partner with the company. But it was unvested, which simply means if you don't stay with the company for a long period of time, it's like it's standard business. You don't get the equity when you leave. You're terminated or you leave. The equity comes back to the company because it, it protects the value and the assets of equity of the company. So we began to grow. Things were growing. We got up to like 300 some thousand a month with all of our businesses uh, that we had collectively underneath the ABS umbrella. And um, we're, we're working up to the point. Things are great. And then we're approached by 19 Keys um, in November 2021. And I got the receipts in the deeps, baby. Uh, uh, we was approached uh, by 19 Keys in December 2021 because uh, I believe his intentions were good. And so, as you can tell, in 2016, I've been trying to figure out a way to raise the awareness of the black dollar. So he's coming in talking about black God, black power, black this, black that. I'm impressionable now. I'm now. I'm no longer even looking at verifying if they run real businesses. I'm not verifying if they're legit or not because to me, I'm real. And and if you got this big following a platform and they're real people, I couldn't even freaking imagine that anyone will be lying about what they've done with with these. I I, I couldn't imagine it because I didn't do it, JT. So I can't I can't expect something crazy to happen when I don't do it myself. So he came to us talking about collaborating. We should put some stuff together. And at first I was kind of against it because when Jabril came up and gave us the and gave us the um the, the pitch, he was like, you know, uh, 
Jake, you and Ben are going to share 25%. And then me, I'm going to get 25%. Derrick Grace is going to get 25%. Chris Cole is going to get 25%. But you and Ben are going to share 25 And so I withdrew. I said, yo, I'm the one with the staff. I'm the one with the systems. I'm the one with the real business acumen. I'm the one that got value to bring. Y'all don't even have merchant accounts. Jabril, Chris Cole, they didn't have merchant accounts. They didn't, and, and a merchant account, for those of you that don't know, a merchant account is a processor who processes your online payments. I got a merchant account in 2020. And the reason I got a merchant account in 2020, because in the insurance industry, they just ACH the money into your account. So you don't need a merchant account in the insurance industry. So here I'm kind of finding the eye, like how you doing business online? And you said you're making all this money and you don't even have a merchant account. But I kind of overread the, the yellow tape in the red flags because I, the, the, the initiative is good. And if we can run it, I know for a fact that we can do it. So if anybody can tell this lion, this is my company's lion. If you see BWO and you see that lion there, that was the partnership of my company with BWO because we had so much we were bringing to the table. And at the time, JT, I didn't even realize why am I even accepting just 25 percent? When I'm the one with the staff. So it, so if you look at the two people, the, uh, the, the two entities, Derek Grace had the same amount of staff that I did. So he and I were the only ones that had merchant accounts that were doing over $300,000 a month already prior to the partnership with Chris Cole and Jabril, Jabril Muhammad. So prior to that, it was just me and uh, Derek Grace. December, 20. December, tw uh, uh, December 21st, 2020 was when we launched BWO. So November. So I say, I'm a businessman. I say, yo, let's get our paperwork together. We'll start this at the beginning of the year. Jabril said, no, we need to move now because I want to launch it on uh, around Christmas time because we kind of want to step on, you know, people buying Christmas stuff and really launch it. I'm a, I, that makes sense to me. But I, the paperwork, I, I wanted to get the paperwork. But when you're in a group of people that all are considered peers, what do you do? You just vote. Everything is taken to a vote. We're outvoted. Cool. We're going to go launch. I'm, I'm expecting all business going to be business and we're going to get the paperwork done together. What people don't know is that Jabril Muhammad didn't have a lawyer. How do you run business without a lawyer? Chris Cole didn't have a lawyer on, on staff. How do you want to business without a lawyer? We were the only ones that me and Derek Grace, uh, B I mean, ABS and Derek Grace were the only ones that even had active lawyers on our payroll. That should have been, God damn it. Now that I said out loud, shit, JT, that should have been a fucking red flag. God damn. God, yeah. I'm saying it out loud. And let me tell you, JT, I told you, I get anxiety thinking about BWO because I'm thinking like, damn, am I the victim or I'm the dumbass? I don't know if I'm the victim or the dumbass. Either way, I'm looking real donkey as shit. I don't, I don't fucking know. So, um, so the money go crazy. Boom. Right. So we make 300 some thousand just with BWO the first month. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and to clarify, okay, you're making this money from doing what? Oh, yeah, oh, remember, okay, go back. Jabril, yeah, Jabril Come came to you. Come on, all right, so Jabril came what to us the because pitch? Jabril came to us because everybody in the black community were literally just were literally just ciphering. I don't know what's going on with my <laughs> just, just yeah, it's, you're okay. on autofocus. Just okay. try, try to stay still a little okay, bit. Okay, okay. You know I'll be moving shit, JT. All right, so Jabril. Um, Jabril came to us because everybody in the black community were pretty much jumping between Derrick Grace, ABS, which is me and Ben's program, 19 Keys, and Chris Cole in the Wealth Standard. And they were paying more getting us individually. So we said, damn, if we were to come together, now we can service our programs and our products at a cheaper rate. But now our reach can now intertwine collectively together. The whole purpose of BWO was to give affordable courses where people were learning skill sets, which allow for them to uh, allow for themselves to take them skill sets and optimize their business. Let me be clear to let y'all know, I ain't never endorsed no goddamn trading because I don't even trust trading. But I don't, I don't like nothing out of my control. I like to be selling products and services. I don't like the thought of just putting something there and just hoping, looking at some goddamn numbers and hoping that something is good going to shake. But that was there. And I'm going to be even clear. Anybody can, if anybody remember, I don't know if they will, but when we first launched, me and Ben made like $120,000, $140,000 in a day. And then Chris, uh, Chris or Jabril now made like six figures in a day. And I said, a lot of people talk about making money in trading. You don't need trading. You just need a business, something that can automate. 
The we we had a vote. They said I was gaslighting. I was talking shit. It takes away from the BWO movement. So I took it down. I said, okay, I ain't gonna say nothing else. It's all. I'm just not gonna even talk about trading because that's just what. If people want to learn trading, they can learn it from the expert Chris Cole. Now let me tell you about. Let me tell you about that. So we we put the group together with the hope that it will be just affordable courses. Okay. So when it came to Chris Cole, I don't know the trading industry. So I, so I would have to I would have to trust that it was what it was. And then there was an article written. And at the time, bro, I was so green and so so much of a dumbass. I didn't even know you could buy press releases. Like, I mean, I, <laughs> no, I, bro, it was beyond me. Like, I, bro, I was thinking like, damn, how are these people getting press releases? I'm doing real business, impacting people for you know nearly a decade, and ain't nobody called Jake for nothing. And Chris, Chris had this, you know, he was with a crypto, and they took a crypto public, and he exited out of it. And I was like, damn, I finally met somebody who knew more business, presumably more than me. So I immediately was drawn to this strong personality that matched mine. No bullshit, matched mine, and it seemed as though bro knew business. Now, let me let me park here parenthetically. I'm the only one that actually retired all of my family and paid off their houses and shit before this BWO shit. I'm going to get to that in a second. So none of them retired. They found, and it was crazy. I'm like, damn, y'all rich and y'all family still, you know, it didn't, your family still working. It didn't dawn on me, JT. We already in bed together. So we got there. We got to roll it out. Shit. We, we in bed doing the do. So, uh, so, uh, so we got that. The things take off. So Derek, Derek I'm talking to Derek and Derek like, yo, cause I'm helping him with his operations. Uh, and Derek, anybody know Derek? He's big on just education. It started with family structure, all that cool stuff. Oh, I cannot wait to show y'all this attorney general letter. God damn it. Let me just get, let me hurry up. So, um, so, uh, so, uh, Derek Grace, uh, I talked to Derek. He like, y'all, man, y'all calling me. Anybody know Derek? He don't like his energy. He don't like his energy to be interrupted. So if it caused him to do extra shit, he didn't want to do it. So he had to wire the money to us and, and, you know, keep up with the finances because all the money was hitting his merchant account first. I said, DG, let us just handle the merchant account. We already know what we're doing. At the time, JT, I had a 0.01% chargeback rate. If anybody knows anything about a merchant account, that is literally impossible to have a 0.01% chargeback rate. And on my on my IG, I literally did a live showing how what our chargeback rate was, which means we've always done good business. We've always made sure the customer was good. We always overvalued, over, over delivered, which is why we felt comfortable as a company Handling the merchant account. Dumbass Jake. I didn't even think shit would bust. I promise you. So we took the BWO new entity and we put it on our merchant account because if we were to start a new merchant account, it's a new entity. So because the entity didn't have sales proof, we couldn't get approved from the merchant account to be able to process over 300 some thousand a month or they will hold the money. So we had to go with merchant accounts that were already existing, which lets us lead to believe what? Chris Cole and Jabril wasn't doing the money that they said that they was doing because they didn't have merchant accounts to prove it. So it went to the ABS merchant account. I had no idea. I come from insurance, JT, that when you hit the merchant account, it say your name on it. You the merchant that's responsible for the charges. I'm like, God damn. I damn sure shouldn't have just did 25%. I'm pretty much naked in the woods, butt naked, getting fucked by, uh, by old trees. I'm sorry for cursing, JT. But, my, but, but this is what it is. So... So we doing that. The money going good. I'm doing the finances. We're sending the wires out. Things are going great. Now, the problem that we were having, because, you know, I'll show you in a second. BWO was breaking up before. But, you know, it was, it was breaking down before it even broke down. OK, because let me tell you the reason why BW broke down. It was ego, arrogance, greed uh, and negligence of knowing what it actually takes to run a fast growing company. We did 11 million dollars in nine months. I'm great at what I do, but my capacity at the time, JT, was I was only able to manage a five million dollar company. I was not, I was not, I was not equipped to to handle a fast growth company at eleven million a year. Seventy percent of the staff were my staff already, so that nobody else had staff. Nobody else had no, nobody had nothing. So I'm like, okay, cool. We manage it. I feel comfortable because we're managing. Things are great. 
the BWO concept, which was the courses, masterminds, lives, getting together, building together. The concept was so beautiful and it was working amazing. People were getting training. People were learning skill sets. People were excited. But, I, you know, I got some more proof. Can I can I show you know, can I show a little proof? Bring it up. Bring it up on the screen. All right, cool. Let's so see. I'm going to go here because I, I, I know I know Eli and Tony got some stuff they got to get off their chest, too. And I, I want them to get it off their shine now. But uh, but right now I'm I'm gonna get this right here. I'm gonna pull this up because um, I'm also going to show you all um, that the the uh, uh, um, BWO end up really just being for real me and Ben's courses. Hold on, right, sir. And here's the thing: the difference between people that do business, JT, versus people mm -hmm. that pretend to do business. People that do business keep a paper trail. That's right. why I never felt like I had to be in a rush to explain myself because I knew I had the paper trail to be able to back it up. All right, so I'm I'm about to go to um. All right, while you bring that up, there's a lot of yeah. new people that came in. I just want to let them know, you know, we we got our brother here. He was a co-founder of the BWO. He's given his narrative of how it started and what happened. When he's done telling his story, you know, we're gonna bring the panel up. Myself, Tony the Closer, Eli from What Happened to Common Sense. We're gonna be asking him questions. And if you have a question that you would like for me to ask him, go ahead and put it in the super chat, and I'll make sure. We asked that question. All right. Um, all right. So look, so I'm going back here. Boom. All right. So I'm going back here. Are we ready? We ready, yep. Jay? We ready to right, so I'm, about to, I'm about to share my screen again. Present. Uh, all right. Boom, I'm about to share my screen. I'm about to show course outlines. So when we looked at course outlines, this is January 12, 2021. Victoria X runs all of our operations. These are the courses inside of BWO. 100K per month blueprint. That's me and Ben's program. Right. Digital real estate, me and Ben's program. Private banking blueprint, me and Ben's program. Purpose to profit, me and Ben's program. Wealth standard, Chris Cole's program. That, that, ain't, that, ain't, no, that ain't no damn, uh, that ain't no damn uh, partnership. What, what, we, <laughs> what, what did... What did 19 keys have? Because I, I, I didn't you do don't know. Did wait, JT. You told me to bring my proof. Go ahead. I, that, you, Go ahead. You're skipping steps and you're jump roping. God damn it. I didn't wait two years to get this off my chest. Damn it. You, they, you have gonna, it. You, you have it. Go ahead. Go. Do All it. right. So, boom. So, so Jabril and uh, so Jabril. Uh, so, this is the issue. As the program starts growing, I'm start. we looking like, yo, Jabril, Jabril what you doing? You not teaching lives. You on here uh, 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 talking about shit in the sky with the stars coming down and flipping it around. You a mindset. To, and we like, yo, all of our programs got mindset in it. So we don't need a mindset program. We need a skill set. And I'm going to show you proof of the communication that we was having with him, along with the memorandum that we sent him. Because he went on the Internet and lied and said that we didn't communicate and he was ousted. But the truth is, we sent letters documented letters from the company because we don't want no misunderstanding later on okay so so we're looking at the courses i'm like damn 75 90 of bwo is are the courses from abs so what in the hell y'all negroes teaching uh uh, uh chris uh teaching a trade and things were going well then he stopped showing up to his one percent trader group the lives Nobody was showing up for nothing. The only people that was showing up every day for the customers was Brother Ben X because he was in there actually talking that he was training and learning too. So he was involved heavily. I was on the operations side, so I wasn't deep down with the customers because I needed to keep the business running because none of them Negroes knew how to run a business. This is a fact. No speculation. So Ben holding customer support down. My team is handling the, the whole line. I'm handling operations. Chris Cole on this whole chairman CEO tour and 19 keys acting like uh, Jabril acting like he getting us media attention from all these other places. I'm going to show you all in a second. We question that. OK, if you're getting all this media attention and we supposed to be on these platforms, I need I need a quantum. I need you to quantify. I need a quantitative type of I need a number to show how many people did you talk to? When are we getting on these platforms? How big are we getting it? Because that it wasn't that. So. That stuff is going. Everybody thinking it's unity with BWO, but we're not even really, really rocking with each other because we all kind of side eyeing each other. But we committed to this and we're going to stick it all the way through because that was the overall initiative. 
Everything was fun and well until the auto trader came. Oh, here we go. Here we I go. I can't wait. Woo. All right. So, real quick, time out, time out. Real quick, before you get to the auto trader, I got a clip. I got a clip. I got. I got to show this clip real quick. The official rollout of my uh, automated trading program. Um, That's it. So making this retail investment uh space more accessible to you know the, the you know the retail trader yeah uh so i released it in the community today uh probably about 45 minutes ago wow uh and in less than an hour um i think uh last time i looked at the numbers right before we came up did about 1.2 million in the last 45 minutes i mean real numbers yeah real numbers. Real, real numbers real life yeah. real life numbers put in the comment section how much you made or if you made some money today alone or this week uh with the auto trader put it in the comment section so everybody else can hear you with no further ado we about to bring up someone who has a testimony with the auto trader the one you've been looking for the one you've been asking about the one you've been trying to see hey what they got going on how much money they done made we got no other than brother 19 keys coming up is going to give his testimony of the auto trader here we go hold on what up family blessings and opportunities man let me put this kilo worth of gold chain on real quick and there's a reason that i waited um till i got on screen to put this chain on uh because i want y'all to know number one um <laughs> I bought this with the market. You understand me? <clears throat> when you buy things with the market, it's a little different, man. The, the, the energy is different. All right, all right. So here we go. The energy is different. Auto trader, money just coming from the sky. Please continue the story. What, 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 what was the auto trader? How was the auto trader even introduced to be a part of what BWO's offers? And so tell me how it went down. All right, so 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 here so here's the scope. So we went to uh we went to uh Puerto Rico before we had the Puerto Rico event during COVID. When we went to Puerto Rico, we actually had like we built out protocol, which gave like in order to in order to launch a product to the public, it had to go through a approval process to make sure that the products that we were delivering were products that were actually sustainable and they were quality. We literally came up with that in Puerto Rico. Uh, and it was based off of our protocol that we have as a company. Before we roll it out to the public, we have to check it to make sure it was good. That was supposed to be the plan for every product that go out. What a lot of people don't realize is that inside of our bylaws, outside of the courses that we put together, we had an 80-20 partnership on intellectual property of things that were developed post-social. I mean, post the original creation of the courses, putting them together. The post the original creation of the courses put together, it was an 80-20 split. 20% went to the house to sustain staff that was supporting uh, people's creations, and 80% went directly to the people who created it. So the auto trader was Chris Cole's creation. First, he started off saying that he don't do auto traders. Then he ended up saying he'd been working on an auto trader for three years. Hell, I don't know. At the time, you know, it's just like whatever. You know, he's the CEO. And that's another thing. A lot of people don't know See, Chris Cole was the CEO of BWO. So, yes, ABS ran all the back end, but Chris Cole was the CEO of BWO. 19 Keys was the head of strategy. He was taken from being the head of strategy because he was not delivering. He was not performing. He was not producing. Um, and so in March, in March, uh, I'm going to share my screen. In March, uh, I, can, I can share my whole screen, right? We still yeah, good? Go right ahead. All right. You said what? I said uh Crypto play ever in Miami was in May. Right, so, so, so the biggest crypto play ever was in May. So when he talked about like he bought, you know, he bought it from the markets. Actually, um, what was the name of the company? You remember? Was, um... That crypto stuff, right? So with the crypto, most people don't know. Sushi. Uh, the, it was a company called Sushi Coin. A Sushi, Sushi Coin. Jabril was actually wired. Um, advertisement money. How much was it? It was uh, forty thousand dollars. It was $40,000 in Ethereum to his wallet that he used. And then uh, at his event, the biggest crypto play ever, and yeah. Jabril actually on uh, The Breakfast Club actually uh, references that the biggest crypto play ever was one of the ones that really put him on game on crypto. It was uh, 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 Jabril wasn't talking crypto for real and actually trying to be a white paper analyst 
until after all of this stuff because he was trying to figure out what value add could he add because at the time chris cole was over all currencies a trading in currency so crypto and whatever he said oh jabril we'll give you crypto learn crypto no crypto and then you know as you learn it you'll be able to put yourself into position so um the biggest crypto play ever was in what miami yeah Miami. in what month uh, hollywood florida and i post i posted a video. hollywood florida and he posted a video what day uh may 19th may 19th 2021 jabril got wired 40 uh 45 or 40. It's a day. It's a day that we post. Hold on, let me unshare my screen. Now it's there. You good? You good? Okay. You good? You good? This is the date that that I posted the video, and this is out there at the where the same stuff. I got live documentation of when exactly he said he made the money from the market. So he didn't make money from the market. He got wired money from the company to be an endorser in uh, an app uh, in in a uh, in uh, advertiser for this crypto coin. They gave him coins and they gave him cash. He actually called them back and asked them for more money. The owner of the coin called Iggy and was like, what's up with your guy? He asked for more money. He went to the market telling everybody he made money in the market when he really got wired advertisement dollars through Ethereum and crypto. That was the, the first bit of bread. So when he doing that chain crypto God stuff, that money came from advertisement money. Okay. Hey, um, Alan, real quick question. I know because I, I don't want to lose this point. He was paid to do what? When you say advertise, yeah, so he's, ad he's promoting a cryptocurrency. Okay. So, so when it comes to advertisement, it's it's like market making. When you're advertising a coin, you're trying to get your audience to believe in this coin. So you're talking about the papers, you're talking about what it is, you're talking about the greatness of it, so yeah. that people can buy into the coin. It raises the value of the coin. More people are into it. You're market making the 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 uh, the, the coin or the trade. <laughs> So when people are getting in, everyone that gets in first, they're making the money. But everyone on the bottom, they're losing. See, they're taking the I, L's. So just, so just real quick, real quick. I, I want to clarify something because there's, there's different terms, right? In my world, market making means that you are the middleman broker, right? When someone wants to sell their shares of Tesla, you're not really selling those shares to someone else. You're sharing it. You're selling it to a warehouse who then buys it and sells it. That's like market making. This type of market making seems more like market manipulation. Yeah. So it's so like it, you're hyping up the coin for people he, to buy it. He about to explain it. Go. All right. Go, All right. go ahead. So we had an event in Miami that was based on educating people of crypto. Like, 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 like Jake said, if you go back and you listen to the Breakfast Club interview, he talks about how we teach earning crypto versus just, just making crypto, like from wherever, it's like, best right? like actually earning it, understand the skill set that it takes. So he came to the event, an event that me and two of my business partners put on free. So first of all, he charged people that he invited to come to a free event. They paid him <laughs> first. They paid him to come to an event that was free. We took care. We took care of the mansion. Talk about it. We took care of the mansion that we in, and and, and for, it's it's a mansion to the point that Gucci Man recorded a video a couple months after in the same mansion. It's we took right. care of of the the experience that was there. We took care of all of the the setup and the security that was there. He invited people to an event that wasn't his, and, and he charged them for the event. That was free from us because we were teaching free. <laughs> we went to Miami. We had already been to Houston. Talk about it. Doing a free training, documented online. We had already came to Dallas. We had already went to Atlanta. Talk about it. And we had already we had already, we went to Miami. Then went to, to, to Chicago, doing free trainings to educate people on crypto to stop getting people to just invest Talk about it. in crypto and start understanding the process to be able to earn it. Whether you get somebody to pay you in crypto or you facilitating a business that's in the crypto market Getting for real. Then, yeah. 19 Keys never heard of a smart contract before. Biggest, biggest crypto, crypto play ever. ever. <laughs> what year we, was it? No, the, tell the year, God damn it. This was <laughs> 2021. Whoa, wait. What year is this? It's 23. So he only really been, okay, go ahead. He ain't really been doing nothing. So when it, when it, we had we had a community that we were building so that we can continue to educate of over four thousand people that you can join the community for free. Now stop. Let me say this real quick. If you know if you own here and you know how to find crypto wallets, 
I dare you. Go find his crypto wallet if you can, because it's all what you say. It's on the ledger. It's on the ledger. So you will see forty or forty-five. Around forty or forty-five, you will see forty thousand. It's, 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 it's based on the what the price was of the Ethereum. He got, so paid, did, he so, got paid four Ethereum at the time, twenty twenty-one so, in May. So you can look at what Ethereum cost during that time yeah. and for Ethereum what he would have got paid. This is based on him coming to an event that me and my people threw. Me and my people expended to be able to provide a free experience for people to learn and educate. There are people who got jobs for the city of Miami based off what they learned from us. So it, 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 right. it bro, no, stop, stop, stop. I, 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 I just want to be clear because I, I let me be clear. I, I want to be clear. Iggy sets up a free crypto education. I'm tell everybody on the It was Iggy right. Slice. So Iggy Slice and Jay right. Crypto, three of us. Y'all set up a, a, a crypto education meeting. That was, that was free. free. That free. was free. Free. You invite 19 keys. Yes. 19 keys invites other people, but he charges those people to come to the free event that he was invited to. The real, yeah. Yes. So okay. what expenses was he, was he covering? Because he was invited. <laughs> so stop. No, stop. People don't know this has been my best friend for more than a decade. So he didn't know that I knew Iggy. What he didn't know is that the biggest crypto play, yeah. So what he didn't know was the biggest crypto play was proving their concept so that we can roll them into BWO. So I, I told them, if you, I've always been about testing. Test mm -hmm. your test it first before we introduce it to the market. So when he was there, he told everybody he made forty some thousand from the market, but he already knew the word that forty money was paid actually from. paid to him. I got the video promoting the coin. He got yes, the video. I got the video. So it's gonna be in Brother Ben X's documentary. He was, way. he was, it was a free event that he charged people to come to. Then at the event, he was able to make a, a connection, and then they paid him forty thousand dollars in Ethereum in crypto to market the coin. So he was supposed to tell everybody, "I'm a marketer for this coin." Gave no disclaimers, no nothing. He basically no. made it sound like he made the money. So if we're talking about an investing, hey, as, hey, if he, I, I, as if I, as if he made money from yeah. investing no. in crypto, Correct. when he really made the money. Correct. By being paid Correct. as a promoter yes. of crypto. And I want to give this disclaimer. Uh, Jabril, I know you're watching. If I'm lying, uh, sue me for defamation. Check me. Check All right, me. okay. Listen, I got I got Tony and Eli. Okay, 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 let's, let, okay. let's wrap this up. Okay, I want to okay. know about the Autobot and how BWO ended. All right, so um, so we're going to the auto trader. Boom. So I want to actually show, because you know, you know, you told me to bring all the facts, right? I'm gonna show text messages. Between uh, uh, Jabril and I, uh, Chris Cole and I first. Text. I'm gonna show you the text messages. Okay. And then I'm going to show. Then I'm going to show you, bro. Then I'm going to show you. Um, let me go back here. Um, let's go back here. Uh, what's this one? Okay. So this is Ben trying to rectify. What a lot of people don't know is that Jabril reached out to Ben and said that if I don't get paid my affiliate, now I'm gonna get to why he was getting paid as an affiliate. The reason why he was getting paid as an affiliate is because of this memo right here. He never delivered yeah. any any of the things that we talked about in our meeting, March 17th through the 21st, a board meeting in San Juan, Puerto Rico. Because you know I keep the receipts. This is this is June 25th, 2021. We sent him a memorandum of understanding of all of the stuff that he implemented. OK, so he was expected to implement, develop and implement a marketing house, uh, a marketing plan for that houses a, a sales team inside the company. He was supposed to create a leads and management merchandise sales. He was supposed to establish protocol uh, and submissions uh, of this course so that we can know that it was right. It was supposed to go through it. What we asked him to do was develop and implement a marketing plan. What we asked him to do was retract TacCoin publicly because he went in. He went and sat on the stage of TacCoin and told them that BWO was endorsing it without the approval of the founders of BWO. If anybody remembers this, this is all facts. Y'all can go back and backdate it. TacCoin is not affiliated with BWO in any way. We asked them to retract it. Then remove any of the slander and negative talk of BWO and then remove infinite wealth strategies. When it comes to infinite wealth strategies, he literally created he was supposed to create a sales program that taught skills because he said that his specialty was in sales. And what right. people need to learn is how to sell so they can sell their businesses or their products. Right. He was supposed to create that. He created infinite wealth strategies um, and he used the BWO umbrella. He, he took he took. 
And I'm going to show you proof. He took the um, the data from ABS, my company, and took the data from BWO, did an email blast selling our audience that was already attached to BWO into his infinite wealth strategies. Um, and we told him to remove infinite wealth strategies from the uh, BWO umbrella. Then on top of that, uh, we adjusted to reestablish the new protocols. And then with that, we adjusted and re we told them adjust and reimburse BWO, all of the people that paid. To join Infinite Wealth Strategies, we told them to reimburse everybody because they were not supposed to be charged again for something that was supposed to already be a part of their program. A BWO. Yes. Okay. So we said, hey, listen, to accommodate, we'll give you 50% of any affiliate link sales, which should be about 25% of the average monthly revenue. This was sent to him uh, December, I mean, uh, uh, June 25th, 2021. Okay. Did, so did the people get that refund? No, he never sent it. Are you kidding me? No. Okay, let's let's go on to the conversation. So, Ben, all this stuff is happening, right? This is May 12th, 2022. Ben is trying to reconcile what's going on because Jabril reached out to Ben and said, if I don't get paid the money that I'm owed, I'm going to blast Jake and I'm going to tear down his whole brand on social media and, uh, and blacklist him with anybody that he's working with on the East Coast. And since then, nobody on the East Coast has been wanting to work with me because this was his plan. So Ben is writing, telling him, hey, listen, y'all been a part of this. I don't know the conversations that y'all are having with the lawyer, but we can get it figured out. From my understanding, it's about $50,000 that that Jabril is said that he's owed. What people don't know is that the $50,000 that he was mad about and telling everybody else I didn't pay him came from auto trader sales. And I'm going to prove it. Jabril Bad Muhammad was the number one seller of the auto trader that he claimed he knew nothing about. Right. Let's get to the stats and the facts. So I said, this is Jake Taylor Jacobs. I will be glad to show the sales of the affiliate payout. Now, this is a conversation between Jabril, me and Ben. I said, I will be glad to show the sales of the affiliate payout. Where from the auto trader, where from the auto trader sales as keys was the number one seller of the product and 100 percent of those products sales were a chargeback. If anybody knows business, JT, you know that. If, if the product charges back, any affiliate sales also become chargebacks. Right. And we're supposed to retrieve all of the money back from anyone who sold a product that was refunded or charged back. And I said, we have proof from our sales data. You know I got that, JT. So boom. So I'm having a conversation with him. I said, bro, I'll be glad to pull the reports and show the numbers and email the, to the respective parties, as well as proof of the lawsuit that we're currently in and dealing with the, in regards to very uh, to the very un, uh, the auto trader sales that he wants commission from. I'm more than willing to just show uh, to just show. Uh, now, remember, now this is uh, this is around that time where uh, whether he responds or not, I will provide those emails. And lastly. I am not personally responsible for a company that went belly up from an ineffective product that I did not create, nor did I support anywhere publicly. I said, thanks, Ben, for reminding us that we can just resolve this reproof. Key said you lied and said that you will pay. Uh, you will pay. Nothing else to talk about. Show me the paperwork on all the mishandled funds. So at the time we was dealing with internal issues, there was an over expenditure on expenses of doing too much in what uh, Jabril was mad about. He was mad that we wouldn't grant him a budget because he could not prove what he was using that budget for. Let's go. Let's continue. And then I told I told Jabril, your contribution at the time was through commission from direct sales of your affiliate channel. You were suspended from BWO at the time for your inability to deliver on any of your tasks by any deadline. You delivered no products. You deliver service uh, or, or service or intellectual property that was able to be used as the agreement we all made to offer a product. All misresponsibilities are the following. He was supposed to create a BWO merch line. He didn't come through. He was supposed to create a sales course for the entrepreneurs in the program. He didn't come through. He was supposed to create affiliate sales force leaders. He didn't come through. He was supposed to create an affiliate sales force training. He didn't come through. He was supposed to create a branding and game plan to execute these timelines. He didn't come through. And I said consistent major outlier distributions and publications. And I put in quotations, which was the initial said value. He said that he was bringing. And I said, and could I, we couldn't find, he couldn't find a quantifiable value, nor could you, I'm talking directly to Jabril in his text, nor could you communicate it. So he went on social media saying that Jake never communicated. 
uh, Mari determined that that was a motherfucking lie. OK, I, we communicated, which led to unset opportunities. And I said, you then were suspended. I said, you then were suspended. Let me go back. Uh, I said, you then were suspended. Um, where we at? Where we at? OK, I said you were then suspended, as said previously, to go on and prove your course's delivery. I said you took the database, even the customers that were originally my customers, ABS. You cross sold the new program to already existing BWO members, then tried to recreate the very program flow of BWO versus proving the concept of the course. During that time, you positioned yourself in competition with the same very group that you wanted compensation from. We all marketed. We all delivered a product. We all had direct responsibility inside BWO organizations. We all had multiple responsibilities consistent with teaching, support staff, management, and et cetera, except for you. These are the facts. He told me suspended was a some was some fake bullet, a bitch ass shit. Y'all see it. So let's go, let's go to the next one. So here. Suspended with some fake bitch ass shit. He said, I brought the value, nigga. Fuck out of here. Nothing. Oh, 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 this ain't the brother with the with the crown. Is he said, I brought the value. The with the crown. I brought I brought the value. Fuck uh for a nigga, fuck out of here. Nothing to talk about. You a thief. That's it. I said, so where I'm where I'm sitting, this is an affiliate payout situation that can be easily resolved with proof of auto trader sales and refunds. And if you feel like you have more claims, what I say, JT, look, read the highlight. <laughs> And if you feel you have more claims, please seek a lawyer. And we will what? And we will let the courts decide. What did 19 Keys respond? <laughs> nah, I'll let court of public opinion do its work. I'll get more retribution there. And you know why he said that? Because he knew I didn't have no big falling at the time on social media. He knew that his brand and his connections, he had more reach to try to ask up uh, to try to uh, defame my character. So he knew he was leveraging social in that if he brought it first, that people would do it. OK, boom. Now we go into the auto trader. Um, we had an 80 20 rule with BWO. The auto trader did between four point five to five million dollars. This is me talking to Ben. I said, this is all of the wheels paying two hundred and eleven a month in payroll. That's one point two million dollars. And payroll in just six months okay um i said we did the merchant fees the merchant fees increased because the auto trader brought more risk i said let's do the value i said 80 20 5 million went there 10 10 million uh, at the time of the 5 million was auto trader sales so only 1 million of that went to bwo not including merchant fees being said whoo i said should i should i keep giving you the rough estimates or are you going to get down on your knees and pray to allah that uh so we can figure it out I said, you wonder why I'll be sitting over here battling multiple person syndrome. So look, he said, well, my thing is, even if we had 200,000 to invest, why would Chris, I'm about to show you how Chris ran off with the bag here in a second. So, um, so here, Chris, this is Chris, May 15th, auto traders, 1500, 15,025. Uh, uh, they can join. He talking about the pre-rollment of auto trader. He says what? 20% of sales go to what? BWO. So that means 80% of the money went to who? Chris. Okay, thank you. So we're gonna keep going because I got the facts. So here, this is Chris Cole's number. Somebody call it right now. You'll be able to get his voicemail. Okay, he said, uh, so he's pressing me for the money. At the time, this is February 19, 2022. He keeps he keeps gaslighting us, telling us he's going to fix the problem. He's going to send the money. And uh, and I'm about to tell you what my response was directly to Chris Cole. I said, the crazy thing is I cannot believe that this conversation is being had. Whatever disappointment you feel like you have in me, I have the same in you. You out of everyone, I didn't expect to leave me holding the bag. All of you, uh, I said, all of you knew I was taking the most risk with my entire brand on my company's accounts. This entire process broke my entire company. I'm starting from scratch while all of you continue whatever y'all already had going. I'm scraping to pay two lawyers over a now million dollar lawsuit at the time. It grew. Um, contract of the, uh, listen. I said, over breach of contract for an auto trader, I still have what? No idea about. <laughs> nor have I ever what? Is it nor have I ever seen? I said, your account keep telling people that I specifically own the auto trader and I'm the only one uh, that can give a refund. That's not the truth. I'm done. I said, I'm not doing no cross suit. And the reason why I wasn't doing a cross suit 
was because he and I had an agreement when we first started because I valued him and I trusted him. We said that if we ever had any issues, we would settle it like brothers and he would come through on his word. So if anybody had kept his word, it was me. I said, you have the remains of the reserve. You walked away with what? 2.5 million from the auto trader. I said, we near, I said, we damn near, near nearly have everyone ask for their money back. And even the ones uh, that said that they weren't because you said that you would take care of it. He responded back to me. He's, oh, uh, that ain't got nothing to do with this here. He, uh, 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 but listen, here's another thing. Purchase book. The course is what? So boom. So he said that he would take care of everybody. He said that he would make sure everybody was solid. He said that he would take care of it and he didn't. So when we went public with Jake on, on IG, me and Ben went public. We said, y'all, we're going to make it right. We're going to start a refund schedule. The reason why we said we would start a refund schedule is because Chris said that he was going to make it right and send us back the money that, that he said that he took for people that was unsatisfied. I got more proof and I got more receipts, God damn it. All right, so all right, boom. All right, all right, all right, listen, listen. listen. I got to show, no, no, hold on, hold on. Jay, I got to show Jabril's numbers. Because he okay, went all right, live all right. from I, I want to see Jabril's numbers. Okay. I'm bringing up Tony okay. and Eli. Let's see Jabril's okay. numbers. All right, so Jabril said he had nothing to do with the auto trader, right? I keep all receipts. I'm going to the Excel. Okay, there are, uh, uh, this was, okay, Jabril said, Oh, hold on. Jabril said, I got this redacted, y'all, to make sure everyone's information is protected. Jabril said he had nothing to do with the auto trader. But the reason why he's mad at me, JT, is because I didn't want to pay him $50,000 again, I mean, outside of the, auto, the the chargebacks. And when I told him no, he got mad because he only cared about his affiliate sales. He didn't care about people being mad, people being upset. So this is from July, July 8th to July 9th. I'm showing you this, JT. Because I also got to show you this here. Um, screenshot. Uh, da, 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 screenshot. Boom. Okay, that ain't it. That's proof that I'll be, I be, I be selling real insurance policies. Let me go on back here. All right, boom. Let me go back to, uh, that's the memo to Keys. Let's look at this screenshot. Oh, no, that ain't it. I keep pulling the wrong goddamn shit. Okay, screen, uh, screen, uh, screenshot. Boom. Let's do that one. So, July 8th and July 9th was these two days. Okay. Okay. So you saw the first spike. That was May. I was at my mother's uh, uh, birthday party when Chris Cole and our head of technology at the time dropped the auto trader without approval from anyone. We had no approval. So he just dropped it. So we made a million something in the first day. The second time was July 8th, July 8th to July 9th. Right. So Jabril, he said he had nothing to do with it. Right. So Jabril, July 8th to July 9th. He, he sold $132,000 of the auto trader. $132,000 of auto trader. His commission was $33,000. That was 54% of his total commissions from selling auto traders. I'm not done. I'm almost there. And then we went to the commissions report. Another one. Jabril said he wasn't paid. Oh, shit. I got to move it to the side. Okay, boom. I didn't redact that. Jabril said he wasn't paid. You see all these reds? Well, not that one. That was a refund. He, uh, that was a refund. $14,000 he was paid in commissions. Jabril. Um, up here, he was paid in commissions $40,000. These are all auto trader sales. He did over $291,000 in the same auto trader sales that bro said he had nothing to do with. He had over 230, it was 234 auto trader sales. The total amount of sales from the auto trader, God damn it, where'd it go? The total amount of sales from the auto trader was 700 uh where, god i don't know where it is right now uh let me see okay the total amount of sales from the auto trader um uh we had 700 and uh oh i think that was it but anyway we had over 700 and we had 700 oh here it is right here oh yes lord we almost we almost there tony we coming to you we come tony to eli get ready we we'll bring yeah, you yeah, up yeah 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 y'all get all right so so Jabril sold 290 something out of 794 auto trader sales. What that say over here? Uh, auto trader, uh, 1%. These are all 1%. Okay, boom. All of this were auto trader sales. I kicked the first names here. All of these were auto trader sales. So out of the 794 people that bought auto traders, Jabril sold 290 something of the of the auto trader sales. So when so you going online 
telling people whatever, and he wondered why I didn't pay him. But when I got a video of Jabril saying this, I got a video of Jabril saying this. We're not gonna hear it on I end unless you share in the screen. Hold on, let me see. give you a second. You said what? All right, play it now. All right, he said. That me? I still communicate with bro. We still actually have oh, no, other businesses that communicate with who? No. So it's like you want me to come back when things are falling, and then I say, you know what? Let's get it. Well, y'all keep saying no. That's y'all, y'all, y'all wilding. Y'all keep y'all thinking it's me with another person or a person. No, it's number one is business. Listen and hear me out. You understand me? I don't have beef with Chris Cole. You understand me? I still communicate with bro. We still actually have other businesses that we transact with, and that's what we civilized on. That's the reality of it. I'm all right. So, 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 so Jabril is saying on his live, he's still doing business with Chris Cole after after going public saying he had nothing to do with the auto trader, getting paid from the auto trader. I already showed y'all proof. I knew nothing about the auto trader. So when we talking in the paperwork. Chris Cole was supposed to actually be the one who actually sent, um, not who sent, but he was the one who was actually supposed to be the one who, um, who, uh, 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 who, um, uh, uh, damn, fuck, I'm trying to say. Oh, he was the, uh, so he's the one who screwed us all. So he telling the public he had nothing to do with it, but you still in bed and doing business with the same guy that you said you had nothing to do with. So we're going to go here. I got one more thing and I'm done. I'm going to shut up, JT. Because I think I did enough proving of who I am and what it's about. So I'm going to go here and you're going to hear from Chris Cole's mouth. Not only did he steal, not only did he steal money from the company from that false ass, uh, that trader, but he also on top, and I got two more. Then also on top of that, he stole the reserve money we were sending to his trading account because he was supposed to trade our reserve money. I'll let the audio talk. Let's say the reserves that you have on your people. Now, from our side, we blinded by knowing what that is on how to leverage that as compensation for what you owed as well and put that into the full scale business plan and pay our operation. You understand me over the next few months until uh, it's, 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 it's not y'all not blind to it. Y'all have a direct account of, of exactly how much um, the direct account of how much money has been wired to the reserve account um and whatever profits or losses that's taken on a, on that account so at this time chris cole is still pressing us for the money he said that he's owed now what you got to remember we made like 4.5 million from the auto trader 2.5 was sent to chris cole already 1.2 was held by the merchant account and when we did the interview with um uh, with jake on i on ig we already refunded eight hundred thousand dollars. that's 4.5 million right there i have no issue uh showing what that is so that's not a that's not a uh uh you know a, a number that's not hard to figure out minus two hundred and twenty thousand or two hundred twenty seven thousand dollars of that that was already taken out of that to cover uh payroll did we, did we do at least 10 million <laughs> Shit, I, I wish <laughs> so 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 what so since since it's not blind side like i know i know i personally haven't checked it but but jay chris like what, what is that number that would be left i know minus 200 something that was sent from payroll so what was in it before 200 something was sent well i mean that would kind of give it as, as i as i as i, as as I, I, told I, I don't have this yeah yeah i don't have that as the call yeah. i didn't have that yeah and i don't have i don't have that in front of me either I mean, like an estimate. So, is I mean, if it was six hundred thousand, six hundred thousand something, two hundred. I, 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 I don't. I, I, I don't know. That's not something that, that. So he's supposed to be the one that's holding our reserves and knowing the money. He's supposed to be the expert in finance. He's supposed to be the expert in trading. Now he don't. He don't know how much money we got in the reserve when he just sent two hundred thousand from the reserve. Hey, bro, we spent. We sent him over six hundred thousand dollars. We sent him over six hundred thousand dollars to the reserve we sent him over six hundred thousand dollars to the reserve that he was supposed to grow membership dues right here it said this was an actual of uh, a paper that was sent to our our company and also sent to the attorney general from a, from one of the people that was inside of bwo he said the, they said she said the original bwo organization consisted of five founders chris cole keys 
Ben, Jake, and Derek, who are supposed to teach the specific courses, law, psychology, money, insurance, blah, blah, blah. Okay. It says participants pay monthly and yearly based on the information they were expected to gain knowledge on based on the presentation. According to the data, courses offered by Ben X and Jake Taylor have been consistent, while courses by the remaining three have been lackluster. Now, Derek already left. He didn't, he didn't, he wasn't messing with Chris Cole Bob. He left a long time ago. He was gone. He said the consistent, she said the consistent, while courses by the remaining three have been lackluster. They weren't delivered at all over over promise and under delivered. Real quick, real quick. Okay, I'm done. Who who is this letter from? A lady named Ashley. I read I redacted her information. I'll show you at the okay. Right. This is redacted information. But is it, this is an internal person. This is someone who's working with the company. Kind no, of this is somebody on. who was this. No, this was somebody, a member of, this was a member of BWO. Okay. Okay. She, yeah. Yeah. This was sent to us, our company. And listen, okay. we got, we got, we got all of this. Um, uh, Chris Cole said uh, that he'd been selling the, in uh, the interest rate Autobot number one. He'd been selling for a while, for years. That's what Chris Cole said. She said, this can't be true because the earliest index version of the website shows auto trader sales dated back to 2021. See, what they failed to realize was we actually had smart people in BWO. We actually had people that wrote code that was actually writing auto traders. So they knew how to backdate and find the history of it. It talked about Chris Cole lying about how many people was funded. Now, you got to remember at the time, I didn't know how to cross check and how to verify because I'm not a trader. And so I don't know what's right and what's there and what's not. And so that's the information I got. I know we limited on time, but right. yeah. right. now I got, I wanted to give you that opportunity. So here we go. Tony and Eli, let me add y'all to it. Here comes Eli. Here comes Tony. All right. It's been an hour 30 in. The brother was able to give his narrative of what's going on. I've got several questions. I'm sure you brothers got questions. Before y'all start, I have to show respect to the people who's been uh, submitting questions through Super Chat. So real quick, let me let me catch up. We got a business talk with Kay. Thank you so much. As always brings awesome content. I've been rocking with you since day one. That's absolutely true. Keep educating us, bro. Thank you so much. Uh, we got Jacob. Jacob is always a big supporter. Says This is a judgment-free zone within reason. Thank you, Jacob. We got Universe Soul King in the building says life is action. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. We got Philip Sadiq, one of the best moderators. Thank you so much, brother. Thank you for your support. Jacob again. Jacob is saying, uh, Jake, did you know one of your partners in BWO was a trust? I'm mm. asking because I watched a previous video about BWO on Pocket Watching with JT YouTube channel. Did you know that Chris Cole was entering into the partnership through a trust? I was asking, I'm answering that question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The answer was yes. Okay. Um, I knew it. I knew a friend he was doing a trust because I, I didn't. Um, at the, I didn't. Th I didn't think that anybody was fraudulent. So I, you know, I like. I, I didn't. I didn't expect that the trust had no assets in it, and that Chris Cole. Had no, he had no assets under his ownership. So when he joined as a trust, I'm like, cool, because I got businesses that I own that mm -hmm. my trust own. So gotcha. it's not an uncommon thing. It so wasn't, I, it wasn't suspicious to you at the time. In yeah. retrospect, I'm dumb as hell. Hell yeah, <laughs> very. <laughs> very. Right, we're gonna get through these. We're gonna get these things. We got uh, Nathan, uh, nurse in the building. Thank you so much. Says, see, I teach things. Yeah, that's why. We're here. Thank you so much. Uh, we got E. Armstrong, new member. Thank you. I appreciate it. Nathan again says, one thing about scammers, they got lungs for days. <laughs> All right. Next, next, next. We got James, the God Brown says, I heard 19 keys teaching people how to astro project. Yeah, I, I, I guess so. Uh, JD in the building says, don't let Twitter get a hold of this. What? Uh, we got Eric. Eric, thank you so much. Says wrap it up music playing. Hey, we're getting to it. We're getting to it. Nathan again, thank you so much. Says yo, this BWO villain uh, origin story not <laughs> adding up. Listen, we're gonna get all into it. I'm sure Tony and Eli have some follow up questions that's gonna clear some stuff up. 
We got DLB1973 says, Officer E is on the scene, please. Yes, absolutely. We got Debt Free Dad. Shout out to Debt Free Dad. Says, bro, was Stan after he uh, left? What's up? I'm not sure about that one. Maybe I'm reading that fast. I'm sorry. Uh, we got Jim McCoy. Shout out. Thank you so much. Uh, his brother saying, what? You, you know the have a site called Arkham Finds Peeps. No, I have no idea. I've never, I've never heard of that before. Uh, Mark in the building. Thank you, Mark. Says, about to do the WWE hand tag <laughs> to JT so he can jump in. Wait, listen. They're coming in. They're coming in. Uh, about to pull up the Officer Eli signal. Yes, yes. We got to that point. I know, Mark. I know, I know. Officer E is in the building. Uh, USA Livestream TV says uh, $1.99 to trademark Jacob New Rap name. Sus sus hookah. All right, all right. Let's see. Mainframe. Mainframe says, don't care if Ben X slash NOI make a documentary on this. You still partnered with scammers. Own it. I did. <laughs> He's owning it. I right. what made them believe 19 keys could implement all these things with no credentials? 19 keys is an orator. Similar to Umar Johnson, not a businessman. All right, this is a question, direct question to you, Jake. What made you believe 19 Keys could actually come through with what he said he could do? Uh, it was the vouching of Ben. They've been, been they've been in business together. They've been online together. It looked like he had the profile that shit. And I didn't go through my natural protocol of due diligence because mm -hmm. I absolutely trusted, you know, Ben in the introduction. And um and that was that. Like, I, I, I went against all of my business judgment. <laughs> all right. Based and, uh, off the recommendations of yeah. Ben. Got it. Yeah. All right. Mark again. Listen, Mark, I'm on it. Mark, I told you. You, you just got to be patient. We got him. Tony is here. Eli is here. The second I'm done reading these super chats, they are tagging in. They get to ask the questions. All right. Nathan, once again, says, y'all think he's talking fast now. Tony and Eli about to have this man in a whole higher octave. Or his connection will suddenly go bad. I'm taking uh, any bets. Now, I know his internet. His internet is strong. It's He's going to be here until the show is over. Trust me. All right. We got Tim's in the building. Great show. Thank you so much. We got Uncultured Currency. Guys, y'all got to go check out his podcast. Uh, moderators dropped a link to his, uh, to his content. We are doing a collab very soon, as soon as my schedule clears up. Says, uh, great job, JT. The worst part about this is no one will be held accountable, and exactly. hate will still come at Yahweh. Oh yeah, we'll, we'll we'll always be hated. You know, we're the clout chasers and all that. You know, that's that that's what it is. Uh, Nathan again says, you think he would had a PowerPoint ready? <laughs> Listen, I he. He asked to come on the show. I kind of sprung it on him. We could have done it next week, but I wanted to do it soon. So lay off him a little bit. This was spur of the moment. All right. We got uh, Tim's again, uh, Super Chat. Thank you so much. Uh, James, the guy Brown. Thank you so much. Uh, Money Mike in the building. Sounds like scammers scamming each other. All right. We got, oh, this, this, listen, this is O'Shea Duke Jackson's other channel. King Gonda says, damn, uh, that brother got receipts. He had a lot of, <laughs> a lot, a lot of documentation. Uh, F-U-T-U. Thank you so much for your support. Uh, Hustle Man in the building says, 19 Keys always felt like a fake Elijah Muhammad to me. I don't know. Uh, Cannon says, salute, bro, for even showing up. Anyone who comes on pocket watching with JT always gets my respect, but especially this brother because he's sharing information with us that he does not have to share. And last, we have if they sell in mindset and not skill set. Yeah, they, if they sell, yeah. Mindset and no skill set, there's nothing to do. All right, Super Chats is done for the moment. If you Super Chat again, we'll do it after Eli and uh, Tony do that thing. So here we go. Eli, got, you seem the most we got, frustrated. We got the scam Avengers up here right now, man. Like, <laughs> this, this is the 
you, he's in right now. Jake's in the in the the, the real hot seat. You can talk about a damn bubble. Um, <laughs> and, and I just want to say real quickly, uh, just like what, what we hear with DJ Envy, um, nobody likes to take accountability for their part when you hear all of these uh, major scams. And uh, first thing I heard was eleven million dollars. Uh, I know with with most of that being through digital products. Uh, there's almost 90 to 95% ROI that you make on selling digital products. So uh, once you start adding this saying, Hey, I made $11 million and we get to the point where we got this many refunds and people requesting to get their money back, this should have been easily ways to be able to re, uh, recoup and refund those people's the money based off the amount of core sales alone. Um, even if you had to dig in your pocket, I know I remember I hear, I mean, excuse me, heard Ben X mentioned that he did that. But, you know, I just want to know, like, why does it take so long for accountability? Because if you're saying that 19 Keys is the bad guy, if, if 19 Keys is, you know, been been taking money to, you know, promote pump and dumps and all these things that you're, 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 you're bringing out to the light today, you sat back for two years after this thing has all taken place and allowed 19 Keys to grow into a fucking monster. You allowed him to get such a bigger platform. You allowed him to be able to get on a bigger uh, scale, bigger stages, if you felt like what he had done was this egregious and it's unethical, why is it just now that you felt like it was it was time to come out and say this? Why didn't you speak up sooner? Because I think that's very, very important because how many people could you kept from you know getting taken advantage of if these things had come to the light sooner? So uh, I appreciate that question. The first thing is, uh, because we were going through a lawsuit with the merchant account, my lawyer actually told me not to go in, not to go public with any of the information. Let's deal with the, let's deal with the suit at hand. Um, and at the time, honestly, I, I didn't even believe that my voice. Uh, I, I didn't even believe that I had like a strong enough voice to actually voice things out. And add this, all, all the evidence I have now is a compilation of us getting the information over time. Um, I didn't have all this information up front because I had to get the information for the courts. It made it easier for me to be able to pull it up now to kind of show the evidence of it there. The second thing mm -hmm. is, the second thing is, um, I, I didn't, I, at the time, I couldn't even believe that I, I was involved in some shit like that. So I didn't know if I was victim or if I was uh, 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 a part of it. Like, I'm, I'm in the space. So I'm like, yo, like, I, I don't know. And so versus complaining about it, getting online, trying to tell a story, I would much rather at the right time have all the information so that I can be able to back up through receipts what happened, what transpired, what was going on. Because at the time, I'm playing, I'm playing defense. And I just want to be clear, Tony, I sold every single thing, a bigger purchase that I bought with BWO, I sold it. My land, my house I was building, my Rolls Royce, my Rolexes, my cars, anything I bought with BWO, BWO money, I financed it back. We had a huge payroll budget. We were hiring a gang of people to be able to help sustain the growth. So we were paying all of that stuff. The problem wasn't the courses. The problem was the auto trader. And so when $2.5 million was paid to Chris, $1.2 million was held up in a merchant account because they held that money because of all the stuff that was going on. 800 something thousand dollars was already paid in refunds. We were taught, trying to talk with Chris to give them just to send the money back so we can make it right. I didn't, I did I truly did not believe, and I still don't believe that my companies that I own that had nothing to do with BWO should have to call for money to pay for a BWO problem when Chris Cole is literally flying around on jets with $2.5 million. Where did the $11 million go though? The, the So, okay, good question. So 4.5 to 5 million came from the auto trade. Everything else was straight core sales. And what we were doing at the time against the vote whatever what we were doing at the time all the founders was getting out was getting the profits all the founders were getting their profits paid out directly to them with the acts that the excess capital of profits that was made so all that's the money was being so you right. guys were all pocketing the money that's what i'm saying so everybody's pocketing the money as money's coming in you guys are freely spending this is the time of your life you guys have partnered up hell you're making a couple hundred grand a month and you're not taking that consideration if something goes wrong, if you have chargebacks, if you have an issue. And that's what I'm saying. Like, if you guys had $11 million come in, I, I, I'm with you where the fact that you say, hey, look, I started selling my own things to try to, you know, make it right. But with the income that was coming in, if you guys had $11 million and five, whatever the other, you know, you said $5 million came from the bot, 
that's a lot of money if you if you have two million dollars or whatever that you say uh became chargebacks yeah it was actually more than two it was actually more than two million pretty much everybody that got an auto trader you know charged back so the rest of that cash was cash that a uh, chris cole was supposed to send back which is why i went live tony me and ben went live and we was talking to one of the members jake and we said like yo listen we want to start a refund schedule back because the communication what was with chris he stepped down as ceo he's supposed to send the money back and the other side of that we were sending a reserve directly to Chris. That's why I played the audio because Chris couldn't tell us how much money was in the reserve trading account that we were sending to him so that he can be able to grow and maximize it so that if anything were to come into play, we will be able to pay for it. But only 20% of the auto trader sales actually came to house and 20% of that came to house. We fund, we refunded and gave back either through a chargeback or through a refund. I'm the one who told the public, Yo, the money is held up in a merchant account. They were not released the money to our account. So if people, we can get refunds. So we had to like literally have the charge, have them charge back the company and our account was at zero. So they're, they're charging against the company. So when they say like, we will only release the money if we try to pull out your account. And if we pull out your account, the money's not there. Then we'll allow them access to the reserve with the merchant account. The merchant account was in payments through a Maverick. Through Maverick and I forgot the other merchant account name. I, I know Eli is going to touch on a lot of this, Eli. And yeah, I, yeah. I, I just got a couple of things that just with this yeah. particular question. First and foremost, so when you guys have structured this company out, I heard you say a couple of things that sound like immediate red flags to me. Like, yeah, nobody, nobody had their own merchant accounts. It sounded like there was no real uh, true company organization when it came to how we were going to have bank accounts, how we were going to manage money. Do we have an actual reserve that we keep for the actual company to have functional expenses and things like that it sounds like every single month you guys were cashing out and balling out so it doesn't seem like it was a real business that was being run this sounds like hey man we saying we're doing it for the culture and i and this is the thing about me if you notice i put you guys on my list i put all y'all on my list um because i say it's nothing worse to me than the people that say they do it for the culture but they make the money. But the minute that the culture actually now it's your time to do what's right by the culture, mm -hmm. the culture gets fucked. But you guys don't see. I don't care what your personal relationships were with these other people. I got upset people that said, hey, I invested with those guys and I trusted in them because I thought they were about our culture. I thought they were about unity. I thought they were about taking us to another level. And no matter what your business dis disputes are, you have a, a responsibility to the people that you guys are using your influence to say, hey, this is what we're up, we're trying to build and uphold. So if, first and foremost, if you're running a business where none of you guys are actually treating it like a business, it sounds like bullshit from the beginning. It sounds like, I mean, just hearing from the company structure itself, if you guys are co-mingling funds with somebody else's other LLCs or whatever, from the beginning, this is bullshit. Like, it's a disaster waiting to happen from the beginning. And, and, and to hear you say that you've been teaching financial literacy since 20. 2015 16 and to allow some shit like that to go on that's scary as a motherfucker to me like i just hear like little cues that make me feel very nervous about people that say that they're savvy and can do such treacherous shit inside of a business where you know you're making millions of dollars you're not talking about you guys are doing something on a scale you had already had a proof of concept when you and ben x came together and you guys made a lot of money together so now when you get where you guys are making the damn Optimus Prime of, of of all the black predators in the community. Now you guys decide that you don't want to have true structure. That just seems to me like nobody cared about actually running the business. It was running the play. So, you know, when I look at the marketing, when I see everything that's happening, this doesn't come off to me as, hey, I'm trying to do legitimate business to take care of people. Because at the end of the day, and this is what I said to Ben, all of you guys should have did what was right by the culture because you guys are saying that the culture is the reason you're here. I shouldn't see people saying that, hey, I'm cashing out a couple hundred thousand dollars, but somebody that invested fifteen hundred bucks can't get their money back. That's fucked up to me. Like, you you know, just if you're saying that you're truly about these people, because that fifteen hundred to them is going to be more detrimental to their lives than what it is going to be to you. And you'll be able to bounce back and recover some of these people. They get stuck and they never can bounce back. Yeah. So, um, can I respond or is yeah, it? Yeah, a, yeah. I'm, I'm, okay. that was my point. Yeah, so, so, so I appreciate, I actually appreciate that point, Tony. And to be fair, again, you're right <laughs> from the beginning, from the red flags, I should have been able to do it, but th there was a kind of a hindsight 2020 and you talked about a bank account. 
we actually we have a uh, we tried to start a bank account with uh, with Chase Bank, um, and everybody was supposed to go and sign. The problem with everybody signing, nobody would chase when you're not in the same states. When you set up, when you set up like an account for somebody to start, you can go in the cities that you're in to a Chase branch and sign and sign what needs to be signed, so that we can be able to start the bank. Because that nobody was willing to able to do that. Should I have cut off the plug then? Yes, but at this at the same time, the business was the, the business or the art of BWO. It was good. The courses was was amazing. And, and then we were sending 20% of the revenue to a trading account that was supposed to hold hold our reserve. And, you know, hindsight 2020, I said out loud, I'm going to take full accountability for my part. I damn sure should have double checked. I damn sure should have, you know, double verified, especially wiring money over there to his trading account to make sure that we had a reserve. And I trusted, but I didn't verify. I went against my overall natural judgment which put me in a compromising position that I had no idea would end up being in this in this space because I'm not used to having chargebacks, Tony and Eli. I, I run a business with a 0.01% merchant account. So I felt like, yo, as long the course is good, everything is fine. And prior to the auto trader, there was never an issue. And I just want to say this for the record. And anybody, and anybody that was a part of BWO as that founders group, if I'm lying, sue me for defamation. I actually call for all of us to be set on a set salary so that the excess capital can be used for reserves just in case anything happened. I was outvoted. So when you got the vote, okay, boom, we're going to go with it. Chris Cole said he took a company public, IPO. He showed that. I only found out in the midst of going toward the end that the IPO he took public, the crypto IPO, the CPO, whatever the fuck they call it, um, he actually pumped and dumped and left them hanging. But I couldn't get that until he felt comfortable to tell me that. And when he told me that, everything was kind of already uh, about to tiptoe on a downward spiral. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's kind of like, uh, I'm, I'm going to catch 22. I'm not trying to absolve myself from my- So you response. knew about that too? Uh, I'm not trying to, so so in that moment, when that happened from the past experience, we already eight months in. So I'm kind of- you knew about that too, right? I, I didn't know about that when he told me eight months in. The, so why not shut it down at that point? Uh, Eli, Eli, go ahead. E e Eli's been waiting patiently. I know, I know you got questions. Well, yeah, but, but, I, the, the very first question I have for you is that if you're the one with the staff, yeah. if you're the real business individual here, yeah. your merchant account is on the line. Yeah. At what point do, because I find it extremely hard to believe yeah. that you're flexing that you have a lawyer. You're flexing that you have all this business experience Yet you're going to take on two business partners that you don't properly vet. You get in red flag after red flag. They don't have merchant accounts. They don't have a staff. At what point into this did you become aware that the red flags are glaring? So, for example, Chris Cole with the ICO pump and dump. At what point are we in? Are we in month eight? Are we in month six? Do you become aware of this? Eight. Hey, eight. Hey, the business shut down in nine. So it was the okay. last month. So, so basically, you was one month into that, okay? No, no, no. I'm, I'm saying, Eli, I'm not trying to cut you off. We were eight months in. You were eight we were months in. About month nine, that's when everything shut down. Yeah, everything. Yeah, you can even see. I can even show you the sales after month nine. There was literally no sales after that. It was. Okay. We were already past. You, you know, it, it was. It was already. I, I learned eight months after. You know, at the point of the nine month. So uh, now, my question to you that I have. As of today, yeah, has everyone been paid back, or are there still people because Chris Cole is holding yeah. money? Are there still people left holding the bag? Meaning, there's, there's still a lot of people left holding the bag. That's why I'm in court with the merchant accounts right now. Chris, okay, Chris Cole, Chris Cole defaulted with the merchant account. They got more money than me, and if the merchant account can't find Chris, if they can't, if if he's not showing up for them, I don't have enough money to to be able to keep up with. With multiple, I gotta have a. I got. I got the law firm in Dallas that we pay. Then we have to pay for the law firm in Cali, and also pay for a law firm in East Coast. Mm -hmm. I don't have the capital to try to find this guy that's always on a jet in a plane somewhere else. So if a billion dollar company can't find bro, but I can't. I, like I'm again. I'm not absolving myself from the space that I was in. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm taking full accountability for what I was. Like I told you all, and Tony, I'm referencing. I sold everything. Because when I sold everything, I gave it back to the company so that we could be able to have cash in there. But when people were calling for chargebacks, it can kind of pull out. 
So all of the excess stuff that we bought, like the Rolls Royce, I bought Rolls Royce, the land, the house. I sold it to give it back to to, to give it back to the company because we actually have paid. Uh, it was eight hundred thousand at the time to uh, to Jake uh, with Jake. I told I, I said it publicly. We sent 800000 back. One point two was at the reserve. So that was two million dollars right there that was paid back. There was another four eighty or something after selling everything that was able to kind of help sustain. Okay, the I get all that. I, I get that. So for the sake okay. of time, basically what you're saying is that the money is tied up and it's becoming very very expensive to go through the process. Yeah, Chris. The Chris got the two point five plus. Yeah. Plus the six six hundred thousand from the result. So now Whatever. my question to you is: If Chris Cole has all of this money, basically what you're saying is that it's going to be a lengthy process and too expensive for you to go after him and get it back. Cool, we got that, right? Unless next- unless everybody can collectively, we can do a civil and a criminal a, a criminal suit, and I'm I'm with that too. Which is which is going to probably be highly unlikely, but I get it. The yep. next question I have for you is: While you're in the process, because again, you you said that you have this attorney. Yeah. Prior to going into business with these people, did yeah. anyone say to you, hey, don't do this? Yeah, my lawyer did for sure. Okay. I went against my lawyer's wishes for sure. Okay. I, I just felt like these guys, black is like it's a black thing. And I honestly, my ego was involved. I felt like if I can control the operations, that I can make sure that the things, you know, can, can handle it right. I want to show you something right now. Yeah. Do you know this lady here on the screen right here? I okay, can't really say it. It's popping Eli, up now. I can't see it. It's, it's popping up now. Give me one second. Okay. All right, Eli, do you see it? Hold on. It's, yeah, it's that's Kane. Sabrina up. Kane. Sabrina Kane. Sabrina yeah. Kane. You know that lady? She was ahead of my technology. Her and Chris got together. And Chris, uh, she had all of our data. That's the only reason that Chris was able to sell the products through because she had access to everything. So she actually okayed everything without actually referring to me. Yes. Yeah, well, so- I'm not going to play the entire video, but I'm going to play a little bit of this video because in this video, she alleges that she helped you and Brother Ben X go from $40,000 per month to $100,000 per month. She yeah, also yeah. alleges in this video that she was supposed yeah, to get 2% of the commissions generated and yeah, that she was supposed yeah. to have 20% equity in a company. Okay. And what she alleges is that as the company started to grow, as the company started to expand, you decided to come to her and tell her, that you have to reduce how much money she's going to be making in the company. And that she said to you that this not going to work between you and 19 keys. And then she alleges that there was a lot of money mishandled and misappropriated between your management and people within the company. She also alleges that you were hiring people for the sake of hiring people by just simply saying we're hiring black people. She alleges that you really did not know how to properly scale a company. And she said the minute that the money started coming in, going back to what Tony said, that all of a sudden now you needed a Rolls Royce. All of a sudden now they had to go to protocol to get in contact with you. And from what it sounds like to me is that you had a lot of people telling you, hey, bro, don't do this. But you saw the potential to go and make money and the greed got in the way because there's no way you could tell me. And again, this is my opinion that you have all of this experience, all of this knowledge. You got the $5,000 check from Wiley Grant. You got the staff. You got all these different things in place. And then you got people telling you not to do it, and yet you're willing to partner up with a self-proclaimed astro projector named Jabril Muhammad 19 Keys and a guy by the name of Chris Cole, who if you just did a simple Google search, you would see he has a trail of dead bodies behind him. So what I'm looking at, I'm hearing this, it sounds like this is sloppy from the beginning. And that you had a lot of people telling you not to go forward with it, and you still went forward with it. So I feel like personally, your greed got in the way. And we see this happen with Isaac Grace and Jay Morrison. We've seen this happen with the kid Hyde the Billionaire and Greg Big Business, where individuals will stand next to someone as long as it's financially beneficial. And they'll get all of the red flags, red flag after red flag after red flag after red flag. But because the money is coming in, and the money is so good, they'll go forward with this. And what we could take away from this, because, see, I got a lot of receipts. And, I, again, I don't want to beat you up because I believe that what you're doing is the right thing. You seem to be straightforward now that things have come to light. But for what many of us need to understand is that when you see these people marketing to you, black, 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 because, remember, you weren't supposed to be, you know, green guys in business. Y'all were supposed to be the black Wall Street Avengers. And, yet now here we are and we're finding out that, 
you know, there's no accountability whatsoever. There were really no assets in the company in regards to that people can go and claim. All of the, all of the reserves and the money was being extracted or being invested, which is just extremely amateur. Because anyone who's running a multi-million dollar company would know at least you put your money in some treasuries or in a CD somewhere, sitting yeah, somewhere yeah. safe. Yeah. You, the last thing you would do is take your money and put it in a trading investment, right? Yeah. So, I, again, I, I think that, you know, you talked about 19 Keys ego, and I would definitely say you had a lot of ego. I agree. Because, because to do those things are, is just absolutely foolish. And to go against that young lady uh, by the name of Sandy, you know, because she seemed to be pretty accurate in the things she's saying, and they line up with a lot of what you were saying, because you mentioned the Rolls Royce, right? So she did say that, you know, the minute the money started coming in, within a matter of two weeks, she had $5,000 suits and Rolls Royces. You know, so I just, I, I find it, I find it <laughs> problematic, you know, that we're sitting here and we're going to try to slip here and say, well, I didn't know to month eight. Eight, I think you've been new. I think you had all of the red flags there, but the money was just too good. Yeah. Um, am I, am I, am I responding to that? What are we doing? Are we, yeah, we, go, we, go right here. Okay. Go right so, um, again, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not afraid of accountability. So first step, the money was good. Um, I, I didn't, I, you know, I didn't expect again, I did not expect for shit to hit the fan. Um, the money was good. We were selling courses that we were already pretty much selling. Everything was kind of fly. The, the whole premise of BWO was to put our courses together to have a discounted rate so that people can kind of be able to get all of our courses at one time. So you start kind of finding things out. Yes, with my lawyer, he said, yo, like, let's get the paperwork done. I'm like, yo, like, these guys, black, they be in the black community. They got the wealth standard. I think that I can kind of do it. My ego, Eli, was thinking that I had the ability to, despite what I saw, I could fix it through, like, just the structure. I, I can get it right. I didn't. Now the three weeks, whatever week, that's 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 not a lie. With Sabrina, I don't want to get into her personal character. I don't want to I don't want to demean her. But when I met her, um, she literally had nothing. She had she was on a hundred and eighty thousand dollar a year salary. We paid her even after she left the business continuously to finish the contract. Um, Sabrina and Chris Cole had an intermingling, and through that intermingling, she had Chris Cole had now access to even the ABS database to be able to push his products through. Now that's the truth. And then the next thing when it comes to that, especially dealing with uh, Sabrina, yes, she was one of the ones that said that she, uh, um, that we talked about uh, rev share and equity, but that was with ABS. That was not with BWO. My company, ABS, we promised that. Now what I will tell you that when we're dealing with uh, Sabrina Kane, we was already doing 225,000 a month. I actually reached out to uh, Ashley Ann, uh, Ashley Ann, King Ashley Ann, She's the one who gave us the game for us to actually go from where we went to $100,000 in a week. It was Ashley Ann's coaching that got us there. Sabrina came on to actually give us, uh, to, to help us implement the Manny Check. So we hired Sabrina Kane to help us with the Manny Check because we didn't know that you can kind of set automation, you know, for DMs. Quick and question. Did you try to reduce her stake in the company? No. 20% interest? No. So that's a lie? Yes. Okay. And, and for one, it was never 20%. That's a lot. That's a lot for someone you hire. That's an employee. That, that's a lot. When we when she came on board, she was introducing the Manny Check. Then she was saying she knew technology, she knew all these other things. And so when we come to find out, she didn't really know the tech like she said that she did. She was hiring people that knew the tech that she did, that was giving her information, and she was funneling it back to us. So that was another. So let me get this straight. So that was another one of your uh, failures to do a proper background check. Uh, with Sabrina Kane, yeah. well, she, she knew how to do the mini check, and so I, I do want to clarify. I came from the insurance background, Eli. Yeah. So, so when it came to selling products, I didn't need technology or merchant accounts. So mm -hmm. when we first got a merchant account it was February 2020. So the, what when BWO transpired, it was in 2021. So I've only been in the mm -hmm. online business space 2020 to now. So there's a lot that I was picking up that I was learning that I thought was transferable. From the insurance space, building an insurance agency, that's a lot different than the online than the online business. Okay, and I got two more quick that's questions. That's my oversight. That's my I oversight. Got, okay. I got two more quick questions, though, right? Yeah. I'm sharing my screen right now, JT. Pull this up real quick. All right, here we go. Were you aware of 19 Keys and Chris Cole 
launching this crypto exchange? Was this around the time of BWO? Uh, they already had uh, the wealth exchange prior. They were working on a wealth exchange prior to BWO. The wealth exchange was introduced to BWO um, as another like another IP, you know, type of business that when people learn trading, they can kind of get on uh, the WSX. And because they already had the IP and we had BWO as the the what well, we were teaching and training co- the students on business and skill sets. We all had like our own tech companies. So we all had like a, 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 a product or businesses that we were going to align with, with BWO based on the business models that we had. Supposedly everyone had at the time. So they already <laughs> had WSX prior to coming to BWO from their wealth, from whatever their wealth. And let uh, me ask you the question. Did yeah. you do any vetting about whether or not that that was a success or real? Uh, what did you talking about WSX? Yes, because right you here, start, if you come yeah. in this video, they were leveraging the uh, you, you, you literally had people are uh, cutting BWO in their head. If you watch the video, I don't know if you guys can see it. Yeah, we can see it. Yeah. Just can't hear it, but we can see it. The Well Standard Exchange. I'm out here with hey, I'm out here celebrating the launch of the WSX, the Well Standard Exchange. As you can see, we're up in BWO. Yeah. Well Standard Exchange all the way. Man, we out here, we making history. Hey, for the all that couldn't make it, you missing out. Hey, we gonna turn New York out. We're gonna turn it out. Hey, Chris still making doing big things, man. BWO, man, we, we just we do a big thing to come together, man, throw on just everything, man. Join the movement. Come part of the family. So, you know, the reason why I'm showing this is, again, you know, here it is. You're the successful ultra business finance guy. You're in and all of these all of these products and services and businesses are coming at you and you're allowing yourself to be attached to these things. And again, I, again, I'm not beating up on you because it's kind of like beating a dead horse at this point. You said you take accountability. I'm really just doing this for the chat just so you guys can start to understand that, you know, whenever you see people that are scattered, and when I say people, I'm talking about people like a Chris Cole or a person like a 19 Keys, where every week they're involved in something and they're not really experts at any one thing, that should be problematic. And, you know, this is something I know I repeat <coughs> myself and I repeat myself because truth is consistent. I just want to end with this. You know, this is what me, Yvette and Tone, what we're talking about when we say people are scattered. And what happens is that they come to you with a solution and then you take them up on offer. And I've come across people who don't put thousands of dollars into this program. And now basically because everything was sloppy, they're left with nothing, you know, and at the end of the day, I'm glad that you're coming forward about 19 keys. But I, like Tony said, I really wish you would have come forward a lot sooner because see what happens now is 19 keys is a bigger monster today than he was then. Yeah. And see what, what, what happens is that, and this is why me and Tony and JT make this content, because see, what you don't understand is that that's $11 million from a wealthless group of people. Oh, that's wait, hold on, wait, hold on, I'm sorry. I, I just, I, I just, um, I, I do, I, I do want to state this because Eli, you have a lot of great points, but I, I don't, I, I don't want to lean on the fact that, that, that there are, there is a such thing as, not like being in being in environments where you you don't even know like kind of where to vet. Like I'm just I'm okay. Um, I know insurance. I know business. I got you know I, I got I got I got the basic practice of it. I don't understand trading. Well, I then don't that's your vetting process. But hold on, that's your vetting process. The fact that you don't know something means you shouldn't partner with it. The if if I don't know something and I'm going to think about this, you're telling me you're a five million dollar company. You're telling me you're an expert at finance, that you're teaching other people and you're willing to put your five million dollar business on the line for two people that you have not properly did background checks on and you don't know the business that they're in. Do you really think that that would be smart to do? No, that makes no sense. So, again, I'm, I'm trying to take you at your word, but to even try to defend that is just foolish at best. I, I got to ask you one quick question, because uh, I heard Sabrina mention that you went into like five thousand dollar suits and you got your roles and all that other stuff what type of money were you making prior to uh the the online course game yeah we, we was doing we was doing about 2.5 to 4 million prior to prior exactly. to what, was the net? what was your net but i've been um i was i was what i was taking home yeah i was taking home i was taking i was taking depending on the year between 780 and a 1.8 a year yeah for sure it, it, 
and, and but this was the first time that you decided that you were going to spice up your suits in your in your in your uh, yeah, I, car. I, yeah, I used to, I used to be extremely modest. Like I didn't buy a lot of fancy stuff. I wore Walmart clothes while running a, a million dollar business. But what was um what was advised is that people online don't like to see modest. And so I, you know I'm I'm. Um, that, um, that was gonna be my that was gonna be my question. But, but, hold, hold, crew, but hold, hold on, hold on, the JT, crew that hold you roll with is like you gotta be in the fancy cars and do all of this. But, but you, you've been, I, I, I just, I'm asking a couple specific questions because you, you've been, I, I, you've been very receipt heavy tonight. You've been very receipt heavy tonight, and 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 when I hear hear these numbers. And to hear that you go from a forty thousand dollar month to a six figure, you know, six figure month, and then as you start having success, now all of a sudden those things change. I'm just wondering if you ever had any truly successful businesses prior to having that course. Hold on, I've I've shown I've shown proof. The 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 issue was I didn't know the online schedule. You showed us pictures, but I'm just talking about as far as successful businesses. We, we're talking two different things. I mean, because obviously we know 2020, 2021, 22 core sales went through the roof. Everybody was, I mean, everybody became an online sale, you know, coach. Yeah. But prior to that, just because I'm hearing your lifestyle change, I hear the suits, I hear the Rolls Royce, <laughs> you know, like for me, man, I can show you, I can show you, you know, cars from back in 2010, 2011. Like you showed us everything else, but I was just wondering, like from receipt wise, could you back those one million, two million dollar claims? Yes. Yeah, so, so um, I showed I showed an example in 2017 on my own personal pen. What I did, I've always and I and I retracted back to my ways. I've always been private when it came to business. I never been a person that used to like show screenshots of what was going on. I did business because I understand the importance of exposure. But when coming online, it was the mantra like, "This is how you do it online." Tony, Eli, uh, JT. February 2020 was my first time actually marketing online to attract people because in insurance, we had direct, we had uh, direct mail. So with direct mail, and I'm sure you guys know it, but I'm just, I'm just, you know, just educating everyone with direct mail. You send mailers straight to the house. Then they, they fill out the perforated thing. It comes back to your office. You call the leads, you come to the house, you close the deal. So online, having a website was, is not needed and still isn't needed in insurance. When I came online, it was like, yo, they're not going to trust you or they're not going to believe it if you don't have the fancy this. And although I was rejecting it originally, I started to kind of start seeing, OK, this is what goes on online. People kind of doing this. This is the premise. And so when when BWO came about outside of my own already businesses, that was to me, I considered it like free cash because I didn't think that I honestly I honestly I honestly didn't think that there was going to be a lot of blowback. Because we were selling a program and courses that were already, that were already, people were already enjoying. They were already having value in. They were already loving. And so when we partnered with these brothers, I did go based on the eye test. And I did show, hey, listen, you got to show your jewelry. You got to show your watches. You got to show your car, which made me start to kind of, okay, cool. At the time, I had a Toyota Camry. I was running a, I was running a seven-figure business driving a Toyota Camry. We all know seven figures, not net. So when I was running a seven figure business at 2017, I was bringing home like 120. My wife, my wife is a H, was an HR manager. So she was bringing in six herself. So we already had like an insulated life. We didn't really need that much. But when I got online, I also too kind of, I kind of, I kind of got the, well, shit, like, you know, like, like, I, I, like that's what it is. Hey, Eli, hey, so, so JT, keep, it, keep it real. You ain't never had no money like that before, and this is the first. No, I no, I never had three hundred thousand in a month coming clean straight to me, or or, or a hundred or two. I, I didn't, yeah, I didn't so, have so, it. Which is so why you turned the blind eye. You're in, you're in a group of people who you look at the size like they pull up. Ben X pull up in a Corvette. Well, well I, I do want to clarify that, JT. Um, Ben X got the Corvette from what we were doing with our. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I, I want to try to use somebody in the chat the money, Tony does the same shit. When you that are with a group chat. of people and they're pulling up in fancy cars and you're making the same money, it's almost like, well, let me. I gotta pull up in the car too because they look at me funny. Yeah, and they're telling you this is going to help the business by <laughs> getting the chain, 
getting the fancy car. That's going to help. It's like almost they're telling you you're holding the business back by not being show show. But I, I got one follow up question that I wrote down from something that you said before. OK, because yeah. you've been gracious with your time. It's over two hours. I got one focused question. Earlier on, you talked about the tangible things that 19 Keys was supposed to bring to the table. Yeah. And he listed off a few things he was supposed to do. Yeah. The note that I have here was he talked about the different platforms that he was going to bring to the table so that y'all can promote and show what BWO was and introduce BWO to different audiences. What were the platforms that he said that he could get y'all on so that y'all can promote what BWO was? EYL, Van Lathan, Breakfast Club. Uh, um, I, I, I can't remember all of them, um, but th those were the ones I didn't have them. Um, my bad. I didn't have it in the you know in the receipts of the text, but mm. those those were. Um, if I can find it, I'll get it. But um, and I, you can you can always send it to me later, and I I'll post it in my community tab okay. or whatever. But definitely, it was it was EYL, the Breakfast Club. Yeah. These were the, his his ad his value ad was yeah. supposed to be. I can get the BWO brand more awareness by yeah. going on these other platforms. Yeah. Um, but you know, ah! was, do, like, like, do you know if any of those? Oh, it was paid? it was E Y L. Jake, Jake, uh -huh. uh, I, I, go, I, go, go ahead and listen. Any of those pay, or any of those paid opportunities, Jake? I didn't know at the time. I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know. Okay. We didn't pay. We didn't. We didn't get on those platforms, Tony. So I, I didn't know. Um, okay. I didn't. Uh, I mean, I didn't. These were the ones that were listed. Yeah, it was E Y L, and this is um, and I and I'll show that right here. Uh. Oh, so this is a text message that he's telling you these are the platforms he was gonna get y'all on. Yeah, and mm -hmm. if I don't, I can't really focus. It's like, you can send it to me later. Just read them okay. off. Okay, uh, and I show, the number is his. It's his number. So, mm -hmm. um, EYL, Wally, Wallow and Gilly, Van Lathan, Sleepers for Suckers. But we already did Sleepers for Suckers with Dave, um, Ash Cash, Mano, and Sway. The usual suspects. <laughs> That's what I knew. That's how. I had a feeling and this was um, the usual suspects. This was uh, uh, this was. I'm trying to get the date for y'all. Okay, mm. uh, this was um, March 15, 2021. 2021. And I'll, I'll get I'll get you I'll get you the screenshot, uh, JT, so that you have it. All right, listen, we've had you over two hours. I don't like these shows to go too much more over two hours. I appreciate you coming on. Any last words of an update about, you know, if, if there are students who were in BWO who are seeking refunds or any type of update of what's going on? Because last time I heard 19 Keys was trying to resurrect the BWO brand. <coughs> what, what, does he even have the authority to do that? I mean, what's going on for the number one, the people who view themselves as victims who yeah. lost money? What's going on with that? You said that there was some litigation going on. What type of update and last words do you want the audience to know? So uh, the BWO page was hijacked by uh, Keys. He said that he was he just need he just need the password and stuff so that he can kind of manage it because we were bringing him back into the fold after terminating him because of lack of production. He hijacked the BWO page, changed the password, changed the emails, and took all of our email database, not only BWO but also ABS um, email database. So he, he, he took the platform as well as the data of the time of what we had. So mm -hmm. when he created BWO again, he just changed it to blockchain something. Um, and so blockchain created, world order. Yeah, blockchain, blockchain world, uh, world order. So he, he has ownership of that because it's, a, it's technically a new, uh, a, a new thing mm -hmm. um, in that. So uh, with the case, it's going to be it's going to be a long time because. Um, the biggest thing that the courts want to honestly wanted us to do to be transparent. Now it was the time where the courts was like, yo, like go like you need to publicly, you know, like t tell the story and disown everything that happened um, so that we can so that we can know there ain't no secret. Like y'all still in business together. And after I showed them the results, the question that the courts had, Tony and also Eli was, why haven't you said anything yet? And at the time, my lawyer never been. 
he's never been in a situation like this. So he was like, it's best not to say anything prior to just getting on and just saying anything and not having all the information to back. So after we've been in court litigation for two years, now it's like, okay, let's go live. Let's talk about it. And then, you know, it's a process. So it's going to be a process. Well, here's the thing, right? Whatever you have on 19 Keys and Chris Cole, send it to me because I have a I have a huge body of dead bodies, a uh, trail of dead bodies with these okay. two, with the whole BWO, the wealth standard, yeah. uh, infinite wealth strategies, you name it. Because, see, um, what happens is that you have to be just as loud as the marketing and promotion. Yeah. Because what happens is that these people, most people have a short attention span. So after the scam is over, after the controversy is over, they yeah. are able to recreate themselves and rebrand themselves. Yeah. And now these people are on podcasts, they rub and elbows with celebrities. And what you have to understand is that, you know, zebras don't change their stripes. Yeah. Right. A con man is a con man is a con man. Yeah. And what we witness right now with the whole envy and Caesar thing, with the whole big, 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 uh, big business thing is that. If you allow these people to keep on getting new people in their pipeline, yeah. they're going to do the same thing. Yeah. So it's very important that now, if you got all of this stuff taken care of from that perspective, yeah. we need to get the information, the word out here about okay. 19 Keys and Chris Cole. Because I just saw a video of Chris Cole, and he's still out here promoting trading. Yeah. I'll, I'll get you that info. Uh, I they, think they, they said, don't say Eli shit, you're going to end up in jail. <laughs> 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 no, I'm good. I'm, 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 I'm fine. So uh, I'll get the uh, the same information I got to JT and the other information I got to get, I'll get to y'all. And one thing I would like to do, uh, JT, I would like to apologize. At the time, it was a lot of shit happening at one time. I'm trying to sustain my company after years of doing the right thing. So there's a it, hindsight 2020 is always easy to be able to say what should have been done until like you're in the mix. And what I would like to say is JT, Eli, Tony, um, it, it, it's, 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 it's y'all's confidence and y'all's vibrato that makes even people like me say, like, it's okay to kind of come out and actually talk about it. Cause honestly, I feel embarrassed, you know, like Eli, Tony, I, I mean, I, I went against everything I stand for because money was good and people were impacted. Testimony was amazing. I always wanted to be a part of something big. Mm -hmm. And if y'all can tell, and when I showed y'all something in a video in 2016, I've been talking about the black dollar since 2016, like directly. Um, and so I just want I just want to say, like, to everyone else, um, if you were affected at, because I did not say anything, I was just going based on what my lawyer said, because I went against them so many times prior to that. So, so <laughs> it's not like, I'm follow him. yeah, he like, dog, you shut up. Don't even say shit else. Let's deal with it. And I'll tell you, like, I've been dealing with anxiety. I've been dealing with a lot. Because you got a black cloud <clears throat> over a brand that was clean and was pristine. I've always done the right thing. I've always done right by people. And just having to stay quiet when you know, like, it's, it's false information going out there, it makes you feel unsettled. And um, and Tony, Eli, JT, y'all just being unfiltered with the truth. That's what kind of made me start saying, okay, when there's a time, I told JT, when I get the okay, and I told, and JT can affirm, yep. when I, I said, when I get the okay, y'all will get the exclusive. Because I do want to come on and just spread everything to kind of give it. But this is also insight to let you all know, don't let your ego of what you kind of know about business <laughs> oversee the, the, the yellow flag, the yellow signs and the red flags that can affect it. Because it'll make hey, you. Hey, Jake, yeah. so I put all you guys on my top 10 scammer list. Out of the BWO, who shouldn't be included? Uh, me and Ben, but Chris and 19 Keys need to be up there for sure. <laughs> Great. Yeah. <laughs> And I got, I got, I couldn't show y'all everything. So I, you know, like, I got you, you know, so I'll hey, get y'all. Hey, all look, I got all y'all. You know why? Because mm -hmm. people still without their damn money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, a lot of so, people. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. so mm -hmm. if, if you partner, you become uh, one, right? We all yeah. understand that. Yeah. So, like, so a lot, of, a lot of people actually, a lot of people actually if got. You, if people back. are old money, we got to make them right, bro. You got, no, you got what, what? real people in the chat that they, all they want to know is when they can get their refund. They don't okay, give a shit so, about excuse. They want their can money. I, can I can I can I um can I can I just mention something? Go a ahead. lot a lot of people that ask for refunds and chargeback actually got their money back. A lot of them were actually double dipping. So we sent them a refund and they also got a chargeback. And so and then we got to go through the paperwork because all a lot a lot we had uh 200 affiliates that all sold. How do you, get, how do you get a charge back and a refund? If you do a refund, so they, ask, 
Good question. So they asked for the refund first. So when we sent the refund, that's through, that's through the merchant. At the time, we was using SAM card. So we released the refund, but then they also went to their bank accounts. Yeah. And so, so, but no, 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 bro. You can't. That don't work like that. I, I'm man. I I, I process well, yes. over seventy thousand over seventy thousand payments. If you if you dis, if you refund something, they can't dispute what you've already refunded. That's it's that's not, that, that's unless you're disputing it. And so if the the video I did with Jake. I told everybody, hey, listen, and this because I don't under, I didn't understand online merchants at the time. I told everybody, if any, if y'all need cash back, just go back through your bank, ask the money back. We're not going to defend it because there was one point two million dollars in the reserve at the merchant account. So we weren't filtering because I was just trying to make it right so that we could be able to get get a lot of people their cash while we're still dealing with this battle with Chris Cole. You keep um, saying so that, that you're was, a savvy businessman. I keep hearing shit that sounds sloppy and bullshit. Like if you mm -hmm. if you're telling me that you you have a lack of accounting where you're going to pay out people multiple times on on refunds that you you had already uh, had disputed, that sounds sloppy. But okay. in, and, and in I, Stripe and in, in Stripe and all these payment processors, yeah. the minute and, and I can open up Stripe right now. If I yeah. if you can't dispute. What's already been refunded because it's it's a it's a zero it's a wash. It's not I'll actually I'll I'll send y'all all the documentation so y'all y'all have it, and and I understand the disposition of where you are, um. But I I like I said I got I've been in court I, I've been in I've been in for two years so I got all the information that y'all need to be able to decipher what's going on. But at the end of the day, nobody is absolute or absolute from making a bad decision or judgment call. And I'm openly and open to open to say the money was amazing. It was it was more cash flow that I was receiving net net that that I did like after expenses after everything. So it kind of makes you start like ah like we're good right now. And I'm I'm open with saying that we mm -hmm. I paid I personally paid out all of the stuff of hard assets that I purchased. I gave it back. That stuff is accounted for. That stuff is documented. It's already there. And we're working our best to try to make sure that we can go collect the bread from Chris Cole. And we're doing the best that we can. Um, and I appreciate again, Tony, I appreciate you and Eli and JT for the accountability that's being held. I'm not fighting against it. I know that there's still work that we got to do. Um, a lot of people were, that said that they had chargebacks, that they're waiting for it. Only 700 and about 90 people out of 4000 people that came through the program actually bought the auto trader. So 700 people minus the people that already got their money back, um, you know, are still owed the capital. Everyone else that's saying BW was a scam. They never actually even got the auto trader. They got the program. They got the courses. They went through the program. They did everything. Um, but when you know when 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 the tide rise, everything else do. And I'm handling that. I'm not discrediting anybody in their financial situation. I know a lot of people spent their own hard on bread. I've been working on this for two years. I've been telling JT. I've been telling what we're working on. And so you're right, Tony. Uh, you're right, Eli. You're right, JT. We're gonna keep doing what we can. To try to be able to rectify what we can, but that's that's what I got right now. I don't have any other information. It's like, so so Jake, man, I, I'm gonna let you go. I appreciate it. The uh the one ask that I know we talked about before, but I want everyone else to know if there's ever any information as far as if there is gonna be like some sort of class action type of thing or whatever resource that we can do to make the people who feel victimized whole. This is gonna be a platform that we make sure that. We're aware of it. As soon as an attorney or a court or whatever say, hey, this is the route that victims can go to try to be made whole, I'm going to blast it out from my platform. You're going to blast it out from uh, your platform yeah. so that people are aware, hey, yeah. this is the avenue that you can go to yeah. be made whole. Okay, And I'm, and I'm, and I'm all for um, we're, we're now at, at the space to where now a civil and a criminal suit. If we can build a suit together with everybody collectively that I was taken advantage of, I will, because mm -hmm. we're personally out of cash too. And so I'm, I'm willing to do the walk with everybody else. I know it's going to be hard. It's going to be a lot. It's going to be long, but mm -hmm. um, we're, we're out of position. You sound like now. DJ Envy, flipping on his <laughs> people. <laughs> All right, well, listen, guys, I'm out. Peace, man. All right, thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. All right, guys, so if there is something that we can give to – the victims, right? If there's like some link to say, hey, you click this link, you fill out your information yeah. so you can join in on this class action lawsuit or whatever it is, Jake is going to give it to me. He's going to blast it from his yeah. platform. I'm yeah. going to blast it from my platform because yeah. the main thing is what? Number one, education. Yeah. We want people to learn from this situation. Yeah. This isn't some kind of gotcha thing. This is a 
This is something that has happened before with a different group. It happened with this group. Be aware of like what Jake said, the red flags. So it's not just point at one thing. It's the, this can easily happen again if you are not aware. And we're trying to bring awareness to no matter what, if it's your friend, your buddy, your loved one, whoever it is, someone you go to church with, whatever it is, if these red flags pop up, you don't do business yeah. with it. And don't and don't allow and don't allow the free cash flow that you're making um, to to convolute your principles and your discipline. And nobody's mm -hmm. subjective to that. Um, mm -hmm. If you if you if you if you if it's coming in, you got to really set on what your principles are. And I let my principles be overridden because the cash was good, and um, you know I didn't expect uh, 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 anything crazy to happen against my judgment. So again, like. Mm -hmm. Listen, JT, again, I appreciate you. I appreciate Tony and Eli. I appreciate the hot seat. I'm never scared of no hot moment. The reason why I haven't said anything is simply because I've been trying to deal with stuff at the business way. I'm going to go straight to the courts before mm -hmm. I try to deal with anything publicly. Because at the time, JT, I didn't really understand the weight of, of, of that, social, that social influence right. as much as I do now. Um, and that comes from you three uh, letting people know, like, your social influence matters. So when 19 Keys introduced Chris Cole to the function, he introduced Chris Cole. They already had business together. I should have been aware about what our disposition was in the marketplace. And I should have been a lot more stringent with that. And that's what I wasn't aware of. And so that's my fault on that. Um, I, I feel like I've done everything I can personally and company wise to try to rectify the issue. But we need to go get the money from Chris Cole and we need to go get the rest of the money from Jabril, the money that he earned, um, um, because honestly, you know, that's you know, that's that's what it is. All right. Listen, brother, thank you so much. I appreciate it, man. You're welcome back anytime. Anybody, like I said, anyone who comes up on this platform and they're willing to sit in that hot seat and take those tough questions, they 100 percent have my my respect flat out. And the brother has been open. He shared a lot of information. There's some information that he shared with me that he hasn't even shared, you know, with the public on, on this episode. Th that's how I know he's being genuine with what he's talking about. So listen, guys, I appreciate y'all rocking with the pocket watcher. We're at over 88,000 subs already. Make sure you hit the like button, share this content. Let's get to a hundred thousand subs by the end of this year. If you have a topic, something that you like to see covered on this show, hit me up, put it in the comments, or you can go to www.pocketwatcher.net and you can click the Ask JT button and you can actually book a free consultation with me and we can figure out what's going on in your personal financial life. So listen, everybody, hopefully I put up your super chat. Everybody here, thank you so much for the support. We are getting out of here. I will catch you guys next week. We are out. Y'all have a safe weekend and don't spend all your money. Hey, Pocket Watchers, are you looking for real financial advice? Thornton Advisor Group is here to help. Jason Thornton, certified financial planner, specializes in tax and wealth planning. Are you living paycheck to paycheck with no retirement plan? Do you need help with the IRS? Book your consultation with Thornton Advisor Group to get a financial plan. Budgeting? Savings, debt management, tax planning, investing, and retirement, even IRS debt settlements. Stop trying to run the play. Get the advice you need to live your best life from a certified financial planner. Book your consultation appointment today. Go to www.thortonadvisor.com.